welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, you should be able to see us in here at this point. Uh, we are starting a brand new game today. We're starting a, a, a game using Worlds Without Number uh, by Sonome Publishing. Uh, if you, uh, if you're in the chat right now on Twitch, thank you for joining us. If you're catching this later on YouTube or on VOD, thank you for thinking of us there. We're going to try to be playing this pretty much every Saturday f indefinitely until we're just sort of, you know, done with it, I guess. But yeah, we're looking forward to this one. It's going to be uh, kind of a sci fantasy hex crawl thing. We're going to be mishmashing all sorts of different stuff. Uh, if you've not heard about Worlds Without Number, uh, it's, uh, it, like I said, it's by Sino Sinomine Publishing. Uh, I just butchered that crazily. Uh, and I just dropped the link in the chat if you want to take a look at the free uh, version of the rules, uh, which gives you uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, there's also a paid version as well, um, where you can grab the PDF at like drive through and get a bunch of extra content, a lot of subclasses and things that we're going to be playing around with. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, big fan of this game from what I've been reading back to it on Kickstarter and I've been looking forward to playing it ever since. Uh, and this is our first time playing it. So we're probably going to screw up some stuff. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll try to fix it as we go. Uh, and as we go from one session to the next, uh, and try to make it better each time. Um, we're doing kind of our own world. Uh, we've played some, some games in the past where we've sort of linked their things together. So it's, it's a little mishmash of some fantasy and some sci-fi. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of build it as we go and hopefully, uh, people will enjoy it. So, uh, but it's, uh, it's a kind of a streamlined D20 mostly, but, uh, other types, uh, as well, uh, where, uh, other types of roles where sometimes we're sometimes rolling D20s, sometimes we're rolling 2D6s, but, um, but it has a lot in common with, uh, with, you know, the D and D's of the world, uh, a little streamlined OSR stuff. So, uh, a lot of things are going to be familiar, uh, but there's some cool little tweaks and streamlining bits in here that just uh, kind of make the, the system pretty attractive. Um, we've got three characters that we're going to be playing with today, and our hope is over the course of time, we're going to be bringing other people in, uh, either for like little guest appearances or maybe building out the roster a little bit more from time to time uh, when, folks, uh, when folks we know, we have friends that we have ready to come in and play. So, uh, but yeah... Um, before we get started, do any of you have any last minute questions as I saw you all freaking out about your character sheets before we got started and you're like, wait, how do we calculate effort? How do we calculate? <laughs> so is there anything that you need to ask before we get started? Yeah, 15 minutes from now, I'm sure like five things will come up, but not right now. Yeah. yeah. I got the PDF open. <laughs> Control F is a thing. How do I play? <laughs> <laughs> where wait where's wait Oracle where's the link tonight? for the game <laughs> uh oh yeah that joke about the link stuff okay um so it's our first session so we're gonna start this up a little cinematically and we will introduce we will introduce characters as it becomes relevant to introduce them right so i mentioned that this is a it's kind of a sci-fi uh, sci-fi fantasy mashup the i the basic premise that we're playing with is that we are on a kind of like a refugee like an alien refugee world where a bunch of different alien species have have sort of found themselves homeless for a variety of reasons that we'll explore over the course of our game and uh they have taken to living within uh this this old ancient mega city and now uh now they're kind of learning to deal with each other. And so everyone here, like what we, what we do is we kind of just made our own species. So uh, in this game, you can create what are called origin focuses or foci. And uh, and that's what they did. And so as, as time goes on, we'll, we'll explain more of those uh, in our own little our own little ways. Um, let's get some music going. And then let's, uh, let's start it up. What do I want to do? Let's do a little, some, some weird music. Okay, so as I crack, get a pop. All right. We start in space. Because that makes sense. We start in space. Black screen. Suddenly we hear, you know, just weird sounds of like cosmic pulsing, whatever. And coming across the screen, we see this polyhedral object of some kind. Uh, when we look at it, it's got these sort of dull metals, uh, these colorful panels. There's signs of, of damage, of like weapon fire, of 
large panels that have been ripped apart from it it's definitely been through the ringer but it's just like this giant d20 floating and flying through space and there's these little lights here and there that are blinking on it some red some green some violet and it's just passing through space in the distance we see like a moon stars sun etc and as we track it it uh you see it start passing by all sorts of debris the camera kind of pans and watches it almost comet like as it begins to push through this remains of like a space station orbital platform satellites you see it as it looks like it's about to crash face first smash right into some kind of satellite a tiny little bit of gas emits from the side of this polyhedral device and just pushes it off to the side as if it's steering around it it hits some other small bits of debris which kind of go flying off in different directions and as the camera spins around to be behind this object now we see it that it's hurtling towards a planet below and we see this planet which is not too dissimilar from earth except the waters are a little bit grayer the the clouds are a little bit yellower everything is kind of been through a desaturation filter essentially and we see this tumbling, moving object just begin to pierce through into the upper atmosphere. We see a little bit of like the fiery, uh, like the fire of the uh, of the heat from entry, kind of beginning to kick up on the panels uh, of this thing. And it's spinning, it's moving strangely. Lights are flashing, and as it pushes through this yellowish cloud cover. Uh, we see that it starts to have kind of like a smoky trail left in its wake. Uh, and we see a panel fly off and then a second and then a third and then exploding out from where those panels were. We see these long, dark cables with these reflective golden sheaths begin to unfurl. Parachutes, uh, three of them, all in sorts of different directions, and two of them immediately catch air and begin to slow the, the descent of this object. But the third snaps, and the parachute goes flying wildly into the sky. And so suddenly, what looked like it was going to be a controlled descent is now far faster, the velocity much, much faster than intended. So the camera begins to sort of curve around a little bit and so now we're almost getting a view above it and we're looking down at where it's hurtling towards we see a large kind of green blue ocean or gray blue ocean we see like this mountainous terrain we see what looks like these dark black mountains signs of volcanic activity we see huge swaths of like desert wasteland uh, we even see like a surprising amount of greenery curving up one of the coastlines. And we see this very gray, very brown section of land. And as we get closer and closer, we realize it's not just dirt, it's not just fields, but buildings start to emerge. Massive buildings, spires, huge, uh, huge circular stadium like coliseums. And as we get closer and closer, we see that it's, they're old, they're, they're rubble, they're like debris. We see huge chunks of like geologic cracks going right through this massive mega city. This, this object continues to fall and it's heading right for this city, spinning, tumbling, moving in awkward directions. You can see these expulsions of gas are coming out in all sorts of different directions trying to slow it down but it's just not working and it's just going way faster the two the two remaining parachutes just being overtaxed we see below these two plateaus begin to emerge on the coast and each of them is covered in structures these thin tall spires these blocky complexes we see ramps spiraling around the plateaus like roads we see all sorts of ramshackle buildings with what looks like walkways between them. We see little slums that have been built up in alleyways. This city is not as abandoned as first thought from high up. And so downward and downward it goes until finally it it's just right above the city when this 
or this small platform, this floating platform just curves past and you see the slightest dink as this this large polyhedral object smashes into some floating rotating platform going around one of the spires and they create this massive explosion. The floating platform goes sailing off into the ocean, moving past the spire that it was rotating and just sailing out like a frisbee into the water. And then you see this polyhedral object just tumbling down into one of the spires, crashing against it. Rock goes pouring down the sides of the plateaus. Uh, You see one of the plateaus ever so slightly gets caught up on one of the minarets of this building, and it kind of hangs briefly, this this object hanging over the side of a plateau. You see people scrambling around on the ground, moving up and down the ramps, people hiding in buildings, uh, people kind of running, riding different horses and vehicles out of the way. And then finally the cable of that last chute snaps and this, this ball just falls and boom, slams into a ramp and just breaks right through it, boom, slams into the one right below it, breaks right through it, boom, slams into another until it just goes rolling across the ground and splats like an egg in what looks like some form of old concrete. And so then a message comes up on the screen and it says, Big Husk, population 10,000. And then a building falls over on top of it. And then in parentheses, it says, maybe a little less. A couple hours later, we see that this crash site is now suddenly surrounded with hundreds of people. But we also notice that there is what looks almost like a a violet holographic line or a wall that has been set up around it in roughly, you know, about two square miles and you see crowds are, have been pushed behind that. These large figures, these massive bulky figures riding around on some kind of strange feral creatures or like serving as guards and pushing back anybody who tries to get past it. We see these smaller figures, these, these golem-like creatures. They have small little data pads out and are expect- inspecting this like crash wreckage. You see some of them going inside the very the very object that fell, others that are kind of holding up strange devices and monitoring readings from it. Every now and then someone tries to burst through like this crime scene holograph and a massive walrus man with a big old trident just steps in front and pushes them back behind the line. And as we zoom around like over top of like the crowd that's forming, we see up on top of a rooftop nearby, there's people who have gathered. There's tables that have been set up. It's like a balcony or a bar of some kind. And this is one of, we'll say, the more popular more popular venues in this part of Big Hus, this giant city. It's a place where the three of you frequently congregate. Uh, it's a bar. It's a restaurant. It's a little bit of both. What would it be called, friends? It's got to be something good. Big Husk. That's the name of the city. Well, yeah. What do we call our tavern? Our, our bar? Mom killed it yesterday with, with the other bar. <laughs> Is it the low bar again? No. It could be the space bar. It could be the high it could bar. could be the high bar. Yeah. Let's do the high bar. <laughs> So we zoom in on the the rooftop of the high bar, okay? We see what looks like an old piece of sheet metal that has been set up like a sign, but instead of there being neon lights, there's just these weird symbols painted in some kind of off-white coloring. We see all sorts of folks that are looking out from on top of it, and we specifically uh, notice that there's one particular person that's leaning over the edge of the railing and I'm going to roll to see who gets to go first. Let's see. Okay. Long. What is, uh, what does Weiss look like as he leans over the railing and looks out at this, uh, this giant, just, just completely wrecked area of the city. Sure thing. You know, pretty, pretty much he's a white skinned hairless. He's a, Crassifar is what he's called. 
and pretty much have bone-like structures throughout their skin and body, mainly with two arches coming out from behind of his ears that loop up towards his head. It makes it look like he's wearing a laurel. Okay. And then mostly his face has a bunch of bone ridges and skin that looks like a durian pretty much, like spikes poking out of it. Mm -hmm. And he's got a bunch of piercings all around as well. Nice. So he's watching. So you're looking over top of this uh, this little kind of marketplace slum district. And where this landed is where you uh, where you lived or worked. So what is something that this crash just of yours just this crash just destroyed of yours? Like what's like a place of living or a place of work? Like what's something that destroyed? What did you lose because of this crash? Sure, it destroyed the part of my like library room where it destroyed. Okay. Like like a study, sort of. Okay, so you had a study. And what kind of books and stuff did you, or if they were books, what, what did you study? Yeah, it's more like spiritual and ritual. It's very, like a shrine or something? Yeah, very like studying the gods and religions. Okay. So you had your own little kind of mini little like religious uh, temple is probably too strong of a word mm -hmm. where you, you maybe you even saw people there. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, um, behind you, in a, uh, in a in a table that looks to be made of some kind of discarded piece of like fiberglass, there's a small candle burning. There's uh, a plate of food, and it's some unrecognizable like crustacean from the ocean. Uh, we see somebody else uh, sitting there as well. They're right behind you. They're kind of friends of yours, or at least you know each other. We see Octavia. Uh, Ashley, what does Octavia look like? So Octavia is a uh, a Bafilmian, so she's a goat person. Yeah. So she's got pale, freckled skin. She's adorned in a lot of like gold jewelry. Like she's got some bands on her horns, um, large hoop earrings. She's got dark brown hair that's cut into a bob because it kind of gets in the way of her armor. Um, and she's got kind of creepy golden uh, cat eyes and a third eye in the middle of her forehead, which is kind of um, a sacred thing for the Baphomians. Um, usually it's only open when in battle, stuff okay. like that. So right now it's closed. Okay. So as you're, as you're like looking out from your comfortable position in a chair, and it's not that comfortable of a chair. This is a very like ramshackle city of just all sorts of different, um, all, <laughs> God dang it, Adam, all sorts of different, uh, like found salvage stuff. You look out and you know too, that there was something of yours that was just destroyed as this, this, this object that fell from the sky just crashed into the districts where you spent most of your time. What is it that, uh, that you lost in this crash? Um, probably just like the little hovel that I've been living in. Cause I kind of separated from my parents, uh, to explore the world a little bit. Okay. I'm writing this down. Okay. It was a hovel. Um, all right, it was on a specific street too, and there has been an attempt over time for the various inhabitants of that have kind of taken refuge within this ancient mega city to rename the various streets and neighborhoods and districts and such. What was the name of the street that your hovel was on? Oh God, my hovel was on. Um the crust because it was kind of on okay. the outside closer okay. to the deserts and it was about four doors down from the temple study that uh that weiss used to used to practice at he would get a very small like two to three person following who would come probably and study with him and so you probably knew him fair enough um and then finally we see stumbling forward carrying like three drinks tightly together like this and then setting them down on the table we see our our third player for tonight uh melissa can you pronounce your character's name and then describe what they look like uh yes yeah, so you see uh sonenka she is a 
you just kind of see a lot of grays in her appearance. Um, so she's she's lean but sturdy, uh, definitely sturdy looking. Uh, she's got straight long gray hair with purple streaks, uh, gray blue eyes. Her skin it kind of has this grayish tone to it. Um, her clothing though has more kind of a greenish brownish feel to it. So she kind of has like loose kind of robish type clothes. Um, what you see around her neck um, is that she's got this green brown scarf kind of wrapped around her throat. And you too, sadly, have, after already becoming homeless, your entire species and having to find shelter here on this planet in this city, have once again lost your home as a giant polyhedral object has fallen from the sky and crashed into the districts where you live. Um, and I would like you to tell me uh, what kind, what is, what did, what uh, is the name of this particular district? We have a specific street called the crust and we know that there are hovels on this street, like tenement housing. We know that there is a temple. I want to know what's the entire like marketplace district area. Like what's it called? Uh, I'm going to say it's called the hill, the hill. Okay. All right. Ironic then because there is no hill. There's now a <laughs> <Not> crater. <before. laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're singing Third Eye Blind now in the, in the chat. Good. I like it. Okay. Very nice. I will take that. So you guys sit down. You drink your drinks. Um, and as you're drinking them, they're just – it's like you're drinking pretty generic moonshine. There's no particular flavor to it. It's just – really intense alcohol because that's all there really is when you look around this uh this rooftop bar there is various ramshackle uh rooftop like or various ramshackle like awnings where under underneath where people are sitting uh, including yourselves uh when you look around it looks a lot like like the most eisley spaced or most eisley bar and stuff like the there's just a, an array of different species. You see humans and stuff. You see recognizable creatures. You see one table where there's just like about two dozen small furry chinchilla-like creatures that seem to be climbing up and down the chairs and the tables and they're tearing through what looks like some kind of piece of roast beef together and yelling at one another in a language you don't understand. You see uh, on the ground below you... Uh, there's a third crew that has come and started to inspect the wreckage. So in addition to these giant walrus folk that are playing the bouncers for this new wreckage, you see the gem-like golems that all of you would know as the Cabochon. They have a tendency to be the leaders or the they run the kind of place here. They're intelligent. They're trying to learn more and more about whoever it was that, that built this city. And now you see these mechanical creatures centipede like starting to skitter forward and climb over top and are starting to deconstruct what's remaining of uh this particular uh this particular crashed object and so this goes on well into the night where it's become one of the few sources of entertainment something different uh for the entire city of big husk uh people have come by but as as the night progresses, eventually people get bored and they start wandering back to your homes, which is difficult for the three of you because yours is now flattened underneath what looks like a giant D20. At a certain point, you all, probably four or five drinks in, you're joined by another individual uh, who wanders up this tall, slender, uh, sort of gray skin, big black eyes. Um, and they're bringing over another round of drinks. And when they speak, their voice has a tendency to kind of echo, almost like there's a, a harmony going. And they say, Ravala, bring you another drinks? It's about time, yes. Hmm. Now you don't, this is not the bartender. This is not like a waiter that's been working. This is just like another patron. And so the good Ravala join you? 
Yeah, I welcome you. Ah, good. And they sit down, and this their face, again, like this kind of shiny gray. They're missing a nose. And they begin drinking from what looks like, almost like a slender alchemy vial. And they're... And you hear just something like, oh, such a pity. Such a pity. Did you too have something ruined by the crash? And there's like a grin that comes up, but it's toothless. There's no teeth. Uh, yeah. I mean, my whole house is gone. Oh, and no. So terrible. Yes. Where will you sleep tonight? Uh, this, uh, I haven't gotten that far. Oh, there are a great many alleyways within the husk where you could sleep. Yes? Is this yeah, what I, you will do? I'd do probably. Hmm. And of you, he turns over to Sonica. And have you too become homeless? I have lost some close to me. Ah, that is pity. Ravala too has lost much. Not home, thankfully, but has lost much. Perhaps Ravala help you. And you, in turn, help Ravala. Yes? What assistance are you requiring? Oh, nothing too difficult. Not for three people like yourselves. Yes? That you... didn't really answer the question. I just what do a, you require? A small saunter outside of the city to retrieve something that Ravala has lost. Sure. I mean, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Now, you would know that moving outside of the city is a fairly dangerous thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Big Hus, specifically, is like the established city, and then the giant ancient megaplex on which, like, this you know, this, this refugee uh, city has been built. Um extends in for miles in all directions other than the west where the ocean is and the waste districts are kind of the general term for what's out there that's just sort of sh like like shells of buildings there's uh there's huge like huge huge like crevices and canyons that have been ruptured there's a great deal of like volcanic activity in the mountains to the south and it's not the safest place that there are plenty of people who actually live within there in various places. You have like little pockets of population uh, here and there for those who don't want to live underneath the, the kind of the thumb of the Cabochon who run the city itself. Um, now, everyone go ahead and do a quick luck roll. Just go ahead and hit the luck uh, on your character sheet. I think it's uh, one of the saves. You're not in trouble or any of that. I'm just curious. It's on your attribute page. Success. Okay. It's the bottom right of the attributes. Got it. Okay. All right. Of the three of you, um, Sonica and Vice, you uh, you have you have probably left the walls. Uh, Octavia, it's unlikely you have. Um, within the confines of it. Um, or at least if you have, it was, you stayed relatively close to the, to, to the, to big husk where there's protection and such. Um, so Weiss or Sonenka, how, we're going to say that your trip outside the city was not a particularly good experience. Uh, so Sonenka, what, uh, what, what, what's something bad that might have happened on your, your trip outside of the, the main city here. I'm going to say, um, because my character is a Beastmaster, so I'm going to say that she tried to um, kind of get a companion from an animal um, that didn't take too kindly to that. Um, okay. And, yeah. I like it. Maybe you have a scar somewhere from where mm -hmm. the talon raked across your skin 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. And then uh, Weiss, same question to you. Something you had a bad experience when you went outside the walls. Uh, what exactly happened? Sure. Uh, I seem to encounter individuals that weren't particularly interested in this like priesthood of the blood priest and stuff like that. Okay. All right. So people who kind of persecuted or did not like your religion. Okay. Okay. So you were har- okay. harassed by like some kind of fringe religious group or something. Mm-hmm. I like it. Excellent. All right. So yeah. So when Ravala invites you to do this, the two of you are very clear. Actually, you're probably just excited to be able to, to go do something. Right? I yeah. just want to help people. Oh, that's so you know? sweet. I like that optimism. Um, but the two of you know that that's, that it's a little bit more of a task than Ravala is, is making it seem. It's, it's dangerous. So Ravala looks at you like, oh, no, just excellent. After Octo- Octavia so brightly and chipperly uh, like responds, yes, yeah, like, yes, wonderful. I uh, I am very pleased to have heard that you will help us. Yes, wonderful. It seems customary. We should get some information as to how much we will be paid for oh. our time and the risk involved in compensation. this. Compensation. Yes, of course, of course. Ravala will provide much compensation. Yes. First, Ravala will give you roof overhead this evening to sleep. It is charity and I am happy to do it. But I would say that not only would you get a portion of the salvage that you will retrieve, but um, Ravala will pay you all each, oh, an additional 10 silver, perhaps. That seems fair. And I look around to see if there's any disagreement with that. I'll be willing to accept your housing. Excellent, excellent, wonderful. This yeah, makes just... Ravala so, so happy to help and be helped in return. But one thing, why us? Why not anyone else? Oh, well, I, uh, I am I mean... told you um, might know uh, one of the individuals who... Um, perhaps Ravala start further back. Ravala is a, is a business person. I have buy and sell and trade things. Ravala have partner, but this partner, Martine, human filth, has tried to cut Ravala out from business dealings, has sent entire crew of people out to this location to retrieve that which Ravala has discovered and will not give Ra- Ravala the tiny bit peace. I am told that perhaps one of you knows one of the people who have been sent, one of the people who you will be competing against to retrieve Ravala's goods. So Ravala is going to, okay. Actually, that actually works out pretty well. Sonica. So Ravalica mentioned uh, Ravala mentions a name. Says uh, says yes, is a um, one of your kind. Looks over at Sonica. Usa is his name. I am told you have great uh, ill favor towards him. Is this correct? And you'll see her face darken, and she'll say you're. You have heard correctly, though, that is not a secret among the Sadao. Yes. So, as you see, there are great multifaceted motivations for you to achieve what Ravala needs you to achieve. One, you need place to stay now that your homes are destroyed. Two, you need money to rebuild your lives. And three, revenge against this Usa who has... Uh, brought disfavor on Sonika. So, Ravala is quite certain you will be able to achieve tasks, yes? Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. What, what, are, what are we getting? Oh, that is very good question. I, 
I hesitated until I knew all of you were ready for this. In the mountains to the south, the Angelins, you will, you, you know of these? And so you know that to the, to the south of like the southern portion of the city, there's like this range of mountains uh, called the Undulant Mountains. And basically it's like, it's like a whole volcanic range. And it's theorized that um, buried beneath some of those might be more of the city because this giant mega plus extends for miles and miles and that perhaps one of the reasons why this place was empty when all these different refugee species started showing up might have to do like a Pompeii thing like maybe it was you know volcanic ash volcanic activity and they grew and they grew and there's all sorts of different theories about it um but it's a fairly dangerous place uh it's very hot um and People explore it for sure, uh, and you know that there are many folks who actually take up expeditions to do to like dig out certain locations in the world. Um, so, yeah, you're you would probably be vaguely familiar it, with it. Uh, maybe never have gone there yourselves, uh, but it's not that far away. Um, so Ravala continues and is just like, yes, yes, there is um, a contact of mine has discovered that. A recent uh, shift of the earth, um, what you call a a slide of land, has come down revealing a very interesting location. Kind of looks around, leans in. Perhaps a military depot filled with weapons and mm, ancient technology that might be very useful to both Ravala and to you. And my partner has tried to take this lead and steal it from me. I would like you to either get there first and recover the item, schematics, if you can, weapons, scrap, whatever you can find. And short of that, you could always ambush Usa and his minions who have already left when they try to return. Recovering whatever it is that they took. Ravala does not question your method so long as the results are what they are. And Sonenka will say, I am not so interested in obtaining weapons, but I am very interested in Usa not having weapons. Yes, yes. Multifaceted motivation. Not interested in one, then the other will help you instead. And I'll kind of turn to the others and kind of explain that uh, Usa has a reputation for forcing mods on Sadao that some of the modern Sadao wait until later to get their mods. And uh, some of the older ones think it's appropriate to force a mod. And uh, he actually did that to my younger brother. So I am just fine to not have him see success. Wait, I understand. That so sounds terrible. Where are you saying you want us to kill him? Because I'll do it. <laughs> Ravala does not care. You want to kill, not kill. That is not Ravala's concern. Let's see how circumstances arise. I am happy to be a foil in his plans. We'll see how I feel in the moment if death might be his consequence. So, so he's a Sadao like you are? Yes. Oh. Say the word, I'll be there. Good. Can you tell I picked a himbo? Yes, very himbo <laughs> like, What? Yeah. yeah. Just say it. You want me Just to kill him? It. Okay. Like with my hands, or you know, with a with a tree, I can knock a tree use, on him. I'll use my goat feet, just punch <laughs> his heart out. I could just kick him in the face. That'll work, right? All right. So, um, Ravala says, um, "You must be um, quick, but it has been very long day, and it is no safety to go out now at night. You should rest. Rest within Ravala's within his Ravala's workshop, and you can." You can leave bright and early in the morning. Is this satisfactory? 
Sure, let us know where it's at. Oh, I will lead you. Yes, yes, come. So gets up and like with this like flourish of a hand, like these long slender arms, like this really kind of unsettling teethless or toothless grin um, leads you out of uh, the high bar, uh, which makes sense because it's on a rooftop, I guess. Uh, and you travel kind of eastward and southward uh, through various streets. Um, you pass by more than uh, more than a fair share of folks who have been displaced because of this and who are now kind of sleeping alleyways or finding some kind of balcony to climb up to. Um, there are tons of like tall buildings here and there, but many of them are like cracked in half. You can see there are even sections where entire uh, entire buildings are missing like their top floors. Um, others, there's what almost looks in some ways uh, like a park or like a space for nature, but it's just this barren flat ground, but people have set up like tents and you can see there's fires that are going. Uh, but Ravala leads you uh, around until you get to uh, what looks like about a three-story building. Um, but Ravala doesn't take you in through the front. Instead, they take you down an alleyway. Uh, and behind this three-story building that's very blocky, uh, but it has a dome at the very top, uh, there is this almost like a garage door, like this two door, like this big wide pull door, but it's definitely a makeshift door. You can see there's sheet metal that has been kind of pieced and patched together. And um, Ravala turns at you and says, could you look the other way just for one moment, please? Ravala will be very quick about this. Uh, yeah. Just one moment. And Octavia immediately just turns around, like, totally cool with okay. it. I love naivete. <laughs> no funny moves, little man. I keep my eyes on him while I turn around. I am quite much taller than you, but that oh. is fine. We are just Josh in here. So he'll t uh, they'll turn around, uh, and you can hear them doing something like you hear like like the grinding of like a like a spring or some kind of machinery and you realize that they're messing with some kind of lock mechanism and then after about 10 seconds they okay you are ready to go in and they pull up this large you know sheet metal uh, garage door and you can see that there's this basically like a warehouse um, where there's all sorts of crates barrels you can see that there's like hammock, like setting up in the corner. There's some kind of like oven in the center. Uh, and uh, here, 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 this is where you will stay for the evening. Much better than sleeping out underneath the stars. Because as we know, they fall from the sky and they hurt you. So yeah, apparently, yeah. yeah. What kind of stuff do you do in here? Oh, this is where I store my goods. Yes. Oh, okay. All sorts of goods. Everything is inventoried, of course. Ravalo oh, yeah. knows exactly how much of everything is in here. Not that no friends of Ravalo would ever think about stealing from Ravalo. That uh, would hurt our young, burgeoning relationship. Yes? Why is your... Yeah. Uh, why is the stove in the middle? Because it, there's room for it. Oh, I guess that makes sense. And, like, Octavia's, like... Pops on the ground. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you are free to. I made food earlier this evening, but it is probably very cold at this point. But if you would like it, you can have it. And you can smell it. It smells rancid and gross. You probably wouldn't run to eat it. But otherwise, finds a couple of spots where you can kind of sleep sleep off your, your drinking. And unless there's something you specifically want to do tonight, we can fast forward to the morning. Uh, how big did you say this place was? Uh, when you look at it, it's probably about 50 by 50 or so, 50 by 50 feet. And then I would say around to see yeah. what he's like stored up. Before mm -hmm. we go to bed. Okay. Do you yeah. want, do you want to do this without him noticing or do you want to do this in like full vision? Oh, he can, he can notice me. I'm just okay. Taking a look. All right. Um, and how, uh, how do you want to, do you want to be opening up stuff and looking at it? Or are you just sort of looking at what's on display? I'll see what's on display, and if it interests me, okay. maybe I'll dig into it. All right. Um, 
you notice so much of this is just salvage. It's just it's just raw resources of some kind. Um, you see like chunks of chunks of like refined stone that has some kind of engraving on it. You see what looks like pieces of maybe a broken statue. You see all sorts of stacks of sheet metal. Um, you can see that there's more than about uh, probably a dozen of these waterlogged barrels of some kind that have a terrible odor in them. And you can see that there's these little pieces of seaweed that's seeping out from underneath the lid. Um, you also notice that there is a couple of really interesting looking gears, uh, like these large heavy duty gears with little nooks in the metal, uh, kind of like a rusted bronze color. Um, and then you see that there's this whole section what looks like it's tapestries and cloths of some kind, like spools of, of different colored, uh, different colored cloth. Okay. It's just like odd, but not out of the ordinary. No, no, he's, he just seems to be like a collector and he has, he has described himself as a business person. Is there anything that's under some type of canvas or cover? seems covered up uh well there's stuff that there's stuff that's in case like there's definitely stuff that's in cases and barrels and things like that yeah okay i was looking for something where i'm not necessarily like prying a crate open but just lifting something up to be nosy that's everything that was easily enough to be seen without having to pry something open okay i'm not looking to pry crates open necessarily unless you are a vice no i was just scouting out what this man collects really Okay. Uh, anything else that you guys wanted to do tonight? All right. So I don't have to ask you where you're sleeping because I gave you a place <laughs> to sleep. And here's where I here's where I jump you with a bunch of random people. Rug. Switch music and go. <laughs> combat music. Okay. <laughs> the night is fine. You wake up in the morning. You get up. Ravala opens the door. You look up into the sky, which I didn't really describe yet, but it's this, uh, you all have become familiar with it, but it's a skyline that is filled with many, many worlds. You see moons, you see planets, and you see at least a dozen of them. And there's a significant, like just a significant number more that aren't showing necessarily this morning. And based upon the seasons and the cycles, you'll see more from what the scholars have said are those species who might have had some kind of space travel um, capabilities. Um, the system you're in is is surprisingly uh, clogged with various celestial bodies. Uh, some, like like Vice and others, uh, have kind of aligned certain kind of religious and astrological beliefs with the alignment of these planets and things, and others don't care. They're more atheistic. Um, but morning comes, you go outside, it's a windy day, uh, there's overcast, uh, these yellow, yellow tinged clouds in the sky, um, and the hustle and bustle of the morning is beginning as you see various folks moving around, um, you see people with wagons that are being pulled by these giant monstrous mollusks, these snail-like creatures, you see others that uh, are pulling, like the, are being pulled by these small little herds of these, almost like saber tooth weasel thing, weasel creatures. Um, it's just this kind of bizarre place with animals that almost look familiar to our kind of human real life senses, but all of them are just a little bit different in some way. Um, but Ravala says, uh, "Are you ready to to hustle to your destination?" Unfortunately, I cannot come with you, of course. It is not my part of the equation. Uh, but I wish you great fortune, and I wish us great fortune. I can tell you that the the, uh, the building you are looking for has a very peculiar statue adorned on top of it. It looks very much like a star with a a ring around it with an arrow shooting through it, piercing it, and shooting up towards the sky. At least 
That is what my scout has told me. That is a helpful description. We will hopefully return with what you are seeking. Oh, I would have imagined you would have greater confidence. Perhaps Ravala has chosen the wrong people to attend to this. No, no, we just don't overstate our skills. I see, yes. <laughs> We're a party with super low charisma. Humility. All around. Humility is a wonderful trait. I look forward to your return. Goodbye. And Ravala closes... You see, they turn their back and they, and they put some kind of locking contraption and then they move back down the alley where they led you down the night before and leave you to your devices. Just like a padlock where we can't like see them. Like, you look at it. it. It is a very peculiar looking lock, actually. Um, it is a kind of a complex mix of mechanisms that, while not impossible probably to pick, uh, would maybe take some time to settle and study. Uh, and you didn't notice any other ways into, uh, other than a small little uh, like sliver of a of a window, uh, but not big enough for any of you to get it within. Interesting. So, what uh, what would you guys like to do? So, did we start with, or do we have any money? It's just the three of you. Uh, for money, um, I have coins. We're part of the uh, um, the mage uh, thing that I got. There was like 80 mm. silver as part of it. So if you pick the mage one, you also had 80 silver plus whatever you rolled. So I have like 180 something silver to start. I think starting uh, silver though is, is like there's options between taking equipment packages or taking silver and like itemizing what you buy. Uh, okay. Yeah. Got it, got Since it. Since okay. we took a package, you don't have that silver. Right. Okay. Then I have, I just have the silver that came in the package then. So I think yeah. I have 73 silver. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. What are you looking to buy there, Vice? Well, it's just that if it's a lot to carry back, that you might need a little cart to rent out. Well, I mean, if we do ambush them, they should already have one. <laughs> to think positive. That's a very good point. No need to bring our own. It will be there. It's going to be so cool to be past the wall. It's, it's... quite dangerous. Uh, Indeed. You know, that's, that's what parents and stuff say. It'll be, it'll be fine. Uh, and so you'll... Um, you'll see Sonenka will um, kind of roll up um, kind of the robe sleeve on her left arm. Um, and you're going to see this big scar that just goes, like, kind of from shoulder down. The moment Octavia sees you start lifting clothing, she's going to, oh, man, you shouldn't do that in public. And she'll like, turn <laughs> away to be really polite. <laughs> and I'll say, no, 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 it's fine. Look at this. And she'll, like. I don't want to look at you naked. That's inappropriate. <laughs> you're, an, you're an odd one. You are an odd one. There are creatures my point is that there are creatures beyond these areas that are quite dangerous and it's not it's not the kind of things we see here in husk and you should beware okay keep your so eyes peeled i should have my other eye open and you'll watch as her third eye just blink, blinks open <laughs> and now it's seneca's turn to be like isn't that supposed to be closed keep that closed we don't need to see that <laughs> Okay, so are you doing any sort of shopping or something before you leave, or are you just going? Um, do you guys, we probably need some, like, rations and stuff before we, we go. we start with yeah, we've got, we go. Mm -hmm. We've got we food, we've got weapons, we've got I think got all the packages gives you food. Yeah, yeah we'll just foot travel then. Okay. Right, yeah, I'm cool with that. All right, uh, I've moved us over to the hex map, uh, if any of you want to come on over. So I got this, got these hex tiles a while back, and I've been itching to use them for something, and so I'm using them in this. Um, so we'll start doing some overland travel. Uh, so on average, uh, you guys can travel about 10 hours a day, and that's assuming, like, you know, decent conditions and the terrain's not too rough and too difficult. And it assumes um, 
that you're kind of going directly towards where you need to go. And what, and I'll go ahead and kind of ping on the map. In general, you know that your destination is somewhere down where I just pinged. It's in those undulant mountains. And so once you start to see the mountains begin to form it is kind of where you're headed. Um, you don't necessarily know which specific hex, but you can surmise it's one of those uh, one of those kind of light, kind of brownish gray ones uh, in that direction. Um, so you're going to be traveling for a bit. Um, so 10 hours a day, and each one of these hexes corresponds to about six miles. Uh, so if you think about, and like in terms of your speed, assuming you're not really like scouting around and doing anything, you know, you know, anything crazy, you're just sort of moving through it relatively quickly. Uh, on average with this particular area, we're going to kind of treat this similar to like light forest and desert because there's a lot of, uh, trees and rubble and kind of that kind of stuff. Um, so we're going to treat this as about like a two miles per hour trek, um, which so so do people like you said they don't travel out a lot so there's not like people just going in and out at all uh not many no it's a it's there's far fewer people that travel about the waste districts um some people do there's plenty of because like because salvaging is a legit industry people do it um but it's usually done by people who are capable you know they're not just like normal citizens now the cool thing is, is that you guys aren't just normal citizens so this is the type of thing that could be something that works for you all, a way for you all to recoup some of the losses that you had from your destroyed such and such. That's some okay. crazy music that just came on. I, I like think... it. Okay. I was going to say it sounds a little bit more reverent than I was <laughs> anticipating there. It feels was... a little ominous. I was going to see if like on our way there we could like hitch a ride somehow if people were like moving in and out. Uh, it's, you can definitely hitch a ride to get to the, you know, to get probably through like the first hex outside of the city. Uh, mm -hmm. but beyond that, like, it's just, there's no, like, there's no caravans that go to the South. Anyone who goes down there, they're like small crews and they probably don't want to help you because they don't mm -hmm. want to share what they find. Right. Um, but you can easily get out of the city and probably th cut through the first hex pretty easily. Um, so anyway, that's something to think about. Um, I do think, like, the one thing we should consider getting before we leave, like, just in case we need it, is, like, a shovel. Yeah. Be yeah. Easy enough to do. Just pick up a shovel. Like, okay. bury a body, uh, dig up whatever we need. Something that simple, I think Ravala would have been able to provide you uh, before okay, you even cool. left. Yeah, something that simple. Sweet. As long as there's nothing too extravagant or too... Um, rare like that's an easy enough tool that he could provide yes yeah, shovel wild. tarp and duct tape okay okay yeah so on our way out when we get going we'll see if i'll look out for the opportunity for pitching right okay um so yeah there's plenty of people that you notice uh and there's also certain trade delegations that will travel outside of the entire mega place you guys know that there's entire populations of people outside of this area it's just you guys haven't and that's not one of you you know there's a lot of folks that have moved and headed up towards like bramble country to the north or to the radiocracy states to the northeast and you know th there's other places that people have gone and there are still trade delegations here and there but they're more like they're uncommon they're not like a daily thing um but why don't you go ahead and do like a convince uh charisma roll to see if you can talk somebody into giving you a ride make sure you switch the drop down attribute in the character sheet to charisma okay convince Ooh. i don't think a three does it no, unfortunately, it does not. Are um, we going to do assisting in this? I can't remember. Uh, in this particular case, he already rolled it, so it's too late. Um, but uh, we're going to say you uh, you try to hitch a ride. You do the classic, like, stick your thumb out type of thing. But it's like this weird kind of bony looking thumb. And everyone's like, no, go away, weirdo. Uh, but no one really wants to give you a hand. And so you're left to your own devices to, to descend the long way towards the outer kind of protective wall which is 
it's not so much a wall as it is like a series of buildings and then there's like some some force fields that have been set up uh at like this bridge that crosses over a dry canal um that during the rainy season would actually fill up with water like you would have to walk all the way down there yourself and then pass it at this point as no one really wants to give old weiss a uh, a ride all nice. right anything else that you guys are looking to do as we leave the uh leave the shelter of the of the city i should say um i wouldn't mind just trying to f go by a market or somewhere where there would be people kind of just to see if i can get any rumors about this you know if anybody else has said anything about this shift in the earth and what's there and okay uh okay so you could roll you could also roll convince um that could work you could roll no uh, if you think it's just something that you as sonica would already have known or heard about um so i'll take that as well if you want to do that instead is it charisma uh i would say in the case of convince it would be charisma if it was no we can make it like intelligence um let's do that let's do intelligence go for it all right so intelligence no Okay, it's just D8. That's a 10. Yeah, DC, DC 8 would have been fine. Um, so that's a success. So you ask around a little bit, um, and you've, you'll learn that there's a couple things you know, uh, and then coupled with the things that you, you heard from some basic rumors across the morning, uh, is that the mountains themselves, they're called the Undulant for a specific reason, and it's because they are... The, they are volcanically active, uh, meaning that the scientists that have been sent to study, and there are, like the Cabochon have sent numerous survey teams all across the city to try to map it, to try to learn about it, to try to find new pockets, and including towards some of the outer boundaries, like the mountains themselves, to try to just gain as much information as possible. And you would know that some of the rumors are that like, it's not uncommon for there to be ash clouds, not uncommon to see in the distance um, to the east volcanic activity of some kind. Like, it's, it's not uncommon to see a sprouting of, of lava or magma. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dangerous place. Um, and again, the, the running theory or the working theory that, that anybody who's, who cares to have one usually has is that the, the species that that built this place and that lived here likely used or geothermal and volcanic energies to sort of power their systems and their society. And they perhaps tapped into it too much and thus created this kind of catastrophe. Um, it's just a theory. It's nothing, something that anyone has confirmed of course, but it is just a working theory. And so um, there is the thought that beneath those mountains, there might be whole swaths of this civilization that was buried underneath some sort of tumultuous volcanic activity um, a millennia ago. Um, you would also know... Um, what, what else were you looking for, I should say? What else, what else kind of information were you wanting? Um, what is... Like, what's out there? Who's trying to claim it? Oh, well, in terms of that, like, everyone's just trying to claim tech. Like, like first, like, the most prized stuff is working tech. If you can find working ancient tech, that is just, like, you know, even stuff that's not particularly useful. Um, but if you can find working ancient tech, that is amazing. If you can find schematics, designs, any sort of, like, lexicon, libraries, that's incredibly valuable as well. Those are like Eureka jackpot moments if you can find that kind of stuff. But people scour, and it's a massive city. We're talking miles and miles and miles across, up because it's very vertical, and down and it's subterranean in some ways. Like whatever, you know, this is this is many times over the size of like New York, if you want to think about it. And we all know how many people lived in New York, or live in New York. Um, so the vast majority of people just come back with scrap. They just come back with metal. They come back with stone. They come back with plastics of some kind. And all that's still useful. 
It's very useful, and people make a living off of that. Um, it's a dangerous gig because there's all sorts of different stuff that roam the wastes, um, some of which are creatures, some of which are tech gone wrong uh, or tech left on some kind of um, some kind of setting that has changed the place in some way, which is, again, why the place is somewhat dangerous. Okay. I think all that's right. all you're going to get. Sure. Uh, okay, so with that, with the two of you spending some time, um, this is a little bit of a homebrew setting, ski Zax, yeah. It's our own little thing. Uh, it's a little like Numenera, a little uh, like Mutant Year Zero, post-apocalyptic stuff, a little mix of that kind of thing here and there, a little Gamma World action, kind of blending a lot of, a lot of different things I just like into one hodgepodge. Okay. Um... And the default setting for Worlds Without Number is Ladder Earth, which is actually somewhat similar in some respects. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, uh, an Earth setting where there was like ancient civilization. So it kind of worked out pretty well, though we don't use everything exactly as it's written in the book. Um, anything else you guys are looking to do before you head out? Uh, I'll just pick up some like bedrolls if we're out there too well. Okay. But it all right. Anything like that, you could have easily been provided um, by old uh, old Ravala. Uh, All right. I'd probably ask around about Ravala. Okay. Uh, that's a charisma. Uh, you can do, I mean, convince if you're looking to get just some information. Or you could do um, connect if you're just trying to get a sense of, like, social acquaintances and things. Okay. Uh, both of them are minus one for me, so <laughs> we'll try it. Okay. Two. Uh, some people have no idea who you're talking about. Like, I I don't know Ravala. You know, I never heard of them. Others confuse Ravala for like, oh, is is that the wagon maker like over uh, over on Blue Street and stuff like that? So. Yeah, you get a lot of disparate pieces of information, and you've come to the conclusion that you just you just don't really know. Okay. Yeah, no one, no one seems to know him. Okay. Okay. So then you guys, on foot, travel outside of the city. You pass over this bridge um, that is guarded. Uh, you see these little like kind of minaret towers... Uh, that are occupied by those large walrus guys, these big bulbous, like seven, eight foot tall figures. Um, they're either carrying some giant metal scrap club or some big old triton, uh, or trident, excuse me. Um, and you can see that there's like a like some kind of force field projection that's in the middle of the bridge that extends outward. <laughs> Make them roll sand. Yeah, exactly. Everybody roll sand. Um and so people can come and go like whenever anyone gets up it's kind of like a drawbridge and so there's just sort of like a wait until there's a somebody's ready to go and once somebody's ready to go they open it up and they pass through and at that point you leave there's a small grouping of other folks that are leaving with you um some of them are eyeing you warily as competition others are not really caring whatsoever um and then a gunshot rings out real sad um but they all kind of scatter in different directions. You have a general direction that you know you're going, kind of to the south and to the southeast. So what I'm basically going to be asking you is when you pass into a new hex, the question is whether or not you're just, are you just going through it? Are you searching it? Um, searching it is going to take time, uh, and that means you'll be able to find some cool stuff, uh, potentially, uh, if there is anything here, but it also means it takes away from the expediency with which you arrive at your destination um, so it's kind of up to you guys uh, there's also things like uh, foraging uh, but doing foraging and exploring takes time so you just have to decide if that's what you want to do so so i guess we need to decide before that are we going to try and beat them there to discover it first or are, do we want to try and ambush them on their way back Uh, getting there first is ideal, so if we can make it as little stops as possible. Okay. Nice. Agreed. Okay, no problem. 
All right. So if you're just going to beeline it, uh, that means you're going to be able, again, you move at about two miles per hour. These, these hexes are about six miles across. Uh, and so do the math. Uh, no, seriously, do the math. I forget how. <laughs> well, anybody? Uh, oh, so not me. Two miles, two miles per hour, and they're six miles, uh, six miles across. It takes about three hours to, to travel across the hex. Um, and you guys know that you can travel about ten hours a day, give or take. It's not, you know, that's just ballparking it. Um. All right. So as you're passing by, like you are in very much the ruins of a city. Uh, you see buildings that have collapsed. You see buildings that are still intact. Um, you can even see, as you look up to some of the very high levels, like the 10th, the 12th, the 13th floors of certain buildings, you can actually see what looks like makeshift walkways that seem to connect them, as though there's people living somewhere up there, like roosting in some of the higher uh, the higher floors of these, uh, of these buildings themselves. Um, you see huge craters in the ground, like impact craters, as if something... Uh, as if something was potentially slammed into here, either from the sky, weapon, explosions. Um, you see a lot of cracks in the ground, um, which is a mixture of dirt and some kind of concrete of some kind. Um, you see periodically the signs of some kind of transit system, like railings. Uh, you don't necessarily see what was riding on these, but some of you, especially uh, Soninka's people, fairly advanced and kind of recognize some of this text. Um, but as you're, as you're moving, uh, it's just lost minutes. Uh, but as you're moving, uh, your first, you know, first couple hours or so as you're passing through, um, the one second. Okay. Um, as you're passing through, it's not that, uh, not that hard like you don't really run into anybody you periodically hear the sounds of like distant howls of animals somewhere um you hear kind of cawing coming from some of these rooftops uh and you hear the sound of like a flapping bird you watch the shadow go across on the ground as it flies over top of you when you catch when you look up to try to catch sight of it you kind of just get the silhouette as the sun beats down through the kind of yellowy yellowy clouds um it isn't until you pass, like the, the first hex you pass through is, is a sort of relatively uneventful travel. Um, you do notice that there was this group of people that uh, were traveling relatively parallel to you, but down like a different boulevard. Um, and every now and then they would kind of look off in your direction. Um, but at a certain point, they veered off a little bit further east and you all were traveling more to the south. Um, so at a certain point, as you have been traveling now for probably about six hours, uh, you get to what looks like this dried canal, uh, and you realize that you see movement up ahead. Um, roll a notice whiz test. Whoever's got the best case for this, I guess. I use zero. I've got one. Uh, just a plus one. Go ahead. Oh god. Uh, wisdom. Ooh. Okay. So, as you see, like what looks like this large canal contour, uh, or not a canal, excuse me, canyon contouring. Um, you notice up ahead that it opens up, which is it's mostly dry, caked land, and then suddenly you see an expanse of water. And there is a small breeze that seems to be whipping through and into the like the like almost like a channel down the down the canyon itself. And the surface of that water is busy. You can see there's waves, chop, and such. Um, you do see on the opposite shore, uh, there are, there are two figures, or excuse me, there's one fig, yeah, there are two figures, I'm sorry, there are two figures that are kind of moving about, um, 
going from kind of poking what looks like sticks into the water here and there, scooping the water up, kind of letting it pour down back. Like they're examining it. And you can see them at a it's a pretty far distance. You're not sure if they've seen you yet. Doesn't look like they've reacted anyway. Oh, how far away did you say that was? Uh, we'll probably put it like a half a mile, maybe. You have the high ground a little bit. You can kind of look down into this big canyon, and there's just a, a, a like a small lake of water. I suppose they're fishing or something. Might be a good idea to refill our uh, water flasks. We'll try and keep behind them and not get noticed. Okay. Yeah, that's that's something you could probably do since you uh, since you caught them first. You could do that, but if you're looking to get closer, then that I would probably want to roll for that. So if you're looking to kind of like sneak up and get a closer look at them or at the water without them seeing you, I'd probably want to sneak at that point. Mm, okay. But if you want to just uh, take a wide berth and just bypass them in the lake entirely without them seeing you, you could probably do that without a roll. I'm curious what they're doing, so I would probably veer closer. Okay. I can scout it out if you'd like. Unless you're, you're good in Dexter, too. Uh, let's see. Don't worry so much no. about your skills. Just think about what your character would want to do. Whether or not they're good at it or not, who cares? Yeah, I'd probably just want to go up and see what they're doing and talk to them. Okay. And Weiss, do you want to stay out of, out of sight still as she does that? Yeah, I'll be. Okay. I'll be hitting them. All right. Go ahead and just roll a, go, you roll a sneak to try to stay out of sight as Sonenica uh, walks up. Octavia, what, what would you be doing? Oh, should, Octavia would walk up. <laughs> You're like a golden retriever. I love it. Yes, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> oh, 11. Very nice roll. Excellent. Okay. So you're, you're shifting from like boulder to a big giant chunk of scrap to what looks like some sort of melted statue of something keeping out of sight no problem Sonica, Octavia you wander up as you wander up you notice that one of the figures starts uh, starts like taking off their clothes and then you watch as they just unravel and they turn to what looks like a, a big blob and they have all these strange like little feelers and tendrils coming out and they just crawl themselves pulling themselves with these tendrils into the water is this something that Sonenka uh, would have seen before I would say that I would say definitely Sonenka you would probably recognize <laughs> for sad <laughs> Uh, you would probably recognize these uh, creatures, Sonenica, um, because you've been out before. Octavia, roll a luck to see if uh, just just or a no. If you just want to go a luck, eh? Roll a no. Roll roll no and roll int to see if you would know. Okay. <laughs> when there's tentacles involved, sanity must be rolled. Um. I would say you've never seen them yourself, but you've heard of these creatures, Octavia. Um, Senenica, you've probably encountered them before. There's not a ton of them, um, and they do tend to spend more time on the coast rather than inland. Uh, and it makes sense that they're by a lake, but they are called Nindarians, and they are these aquatic-like species that... Um, octopus-like in some ways that um, when they do come into Big Husk, which is rare, they have a tendency to take their their tendrils or tentacles and they wrap them tightly and create limbs as to give the appearance of a bipedal creature. Uh, but really, they're just like this big blobbish octopus-like. Um, and so then can you, you, you've probably seen one and you want and they just went into the water. Um, so what about the other one? Is the other one? The other one's still the standing there, just kind of looking and then kind of examining the water and what looks like a glass, and then they see you approach. Um yeah. and they stop and they kind of pause and they're kind of waiting to see how you react. Um, Octavia 
waves enthusiastically like hey guys uh uh how are, how's it going how are you today okay so uh this creature like they emit this really peculiar uh sound but it almost comes across like a voice it's like this rapid vibration as part of their kind of top the top ravel of their uh, their top braid, which is almost like mm-hmm. a head, kind of unravels a little bit, and you see like this rapid like fluctuation of their of their tendrils as as sound emits from it, and you just hear like this really bizarre, almost robotic like like greetings. This morn, we are peaceful. Are you peaceful? Yeah. Okay. Then you may approach without fear. I I would love to, and Octavia <laughs> approaches them. Okay, and then the other one jumps out of the water and strangles you to death. Uh, but yeah, you approach, <laughs> um, and when you walk up, you notice that there's there's two blobs swimming about in the water. Uh, and they're just pushing and they're moving with great with great quickness. You also notice now that you're closer to the water that there's bubbles that seem to be coming up from below, like from from deep into the water. And when they come up, they they're not they're not coming from these blobs that are swimming, these these Nandarians. They're coming from deep below, and you realize looking at it that this is really deep. And it's crystal clear, and you can see almost all the way down, which has to be at least 50, 60, maybe even more. It's hard to tell, but you see bubbles coming up, and whenever they come to the surface, they pop, and you just hear what sounds like a chime. Wow. That, wow. You guys live here? No. We are traveling peculiar this water is curious we are me too i really don't i got and she like points at her goat hooves and she's like swimming swimming is not for me but uh that's that's this is weird and Sonenka will speak up, and um, what you'll notice is that her speech takes on a mimic of their speech. And she'll say, um, we are peaceful. Is this area new? So are you doing, like, kind of the slow, deliberate, like, mm-hmm. shortened stuff? Okay. Um, all right. Octavia's going to look at you like you're being really weird. Yeah. It might even come across as mocking. Uh, I'm going to roll. Let me roll a little reaction to see yeah. how they feel about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there's a pause. Uh, but they but they, they continue. Um, and what was the specific question that you asked, Sonica? Like if they're... If they're in this body of water because it's new, like if it hadn't been here mm. before. We haven't crossed here before. Maybe new, but very strange. How so? Do you not see how deep that is? And not only that, every time a bubble pops, which is relatively quickly, like a couple, uh, like every, like probably about four or five every minute, you all hear a chime. Like Weiss, maybe not you because you're a little bit further back, but the two of you certainly do. And it's a chime. It's like a bong, ding. I think Sonenka's going to like drop her head in the water and try to blow a bubble and see what happens. Okay. And when you when you do that, the Vindarian Ooh uh, so as you dunk your head into it, uh, you feel sort of a numbness wash over your head. Uh, roll a uh, physical save. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to click that. Oh no. Oh, 
Oh, I failed. Okay. When you put your head into the water, uh, within seconds, you just feel not... It's not coldness, necessarily, but you just feel your entire head go numb. Just utterly numb. Like, your mouth doesn't work right. Your eyelids are kind of... You're struggling to, like keep them closed you feel like this intense numbness in your cheeks and then Indarian will rush over and you watch Octavia as these elastic tendrils just rip out from the arms and just pull Sonin kind of uh, right out no very strange water not good for you to go in and it's just again all of this is like this vibration right yeah. so it's like a weird sound mm -hmm. did uh, i get a bubble off before i went totally numb sure but like your bubbles didn't seem to do anything Aww. they were just bubbles well the bubbles are emerging from deep down below <laughs> it's yeah. just regular stuff <laughs> just for science had to give it a try thought it'd be cool to blow a bubble that made noise uh, uh, Weiss, what are you doing at this point? You see them actively Yeah, I see them conversing peacefully. I'll step out. Okay. Uh, and so, then Dar ooh, you hide! And shoots you instead. No, but you walk up, <laughs> and they get a little nervous at first when they see you, because they didn't, they actually didn't notice you. Um, and you see them step back a little bit. We did not hurt her. We helped her. No need. Oh. No, like, oh, their oh. tendrils are up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Octavia's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, wh what's your name? I I'm Octavia, by the way. I need one second to find it. <laughs> I That's a strange name. <laughs> Oladar. Oladar. Keep bringing up. I have like these two handouts up, and like the one I keep bringing up the wrong one at the wrong time every single time. <laughs> Like oh, um, Octavia's gonna point at the the two like blobs that are like in the water and be like, "Run, Milindal, are they okay?" Yes, Lindalian are far more capable of swimming in all sorts of liquids. Oh, is it water? Hmm. I think so. Would you like to taste? And he kind of holds forth like what looks like this relatively clear beaker. It's one of the cleanest pieces of glass you've probably ever seen. Oh, I'm a himbo. I yes. shouldn't say he. It's more like they. There's no real clear. It's more like asexuality. Uh, but yeah, you do try it? Uh, yes. Okay, Won't you drink it. turn like hers. While I'm walking around poking in my face. Yeah. Your feeling is coming back. Your feeling your feeling is coming back. But it's just, you would imagine that if you were to fully submerse yourself in this, you would worry that after a time, if all of your body goes numb, you would probably drown or something. Mm -hmm. um, but Octavia, you drink it. Uh, yep. And uh, go ahead and roll a physical Not save. Not like a, like I take like a sip. Any little bit matters. Go yeah, ahead, take yeah, a physical yeah. save. Mm, okay, you do drink it. Your tongue gets a little numb, your lips a little numb as you take that first sip, but it goes down. You cough a bit as it settles in your chest, um, but it doesn't seem to have any lasting effect on you. Okay. Or Does so it, it seems. Tastes like water. Oh, yeah, definitely tastes like water. Yeah, very cool water. Like crisp. Okay. Like from a mountain spring. Yeah, it tastes fine. Like from the, the bathtub of a man living in New York City. Like the bathtub of a girl gamer. <laughs> oh, God. Nice. <laughs> oh. Um, so while you're talking, the other two start crawling out, and you see them just, <laughs> like, like, they shake like a dog shakes when they're trying to dry the, the, the water off. And then <laughs> they quickly braid up their... Their arms and legs and like a head of some kind so that they can look at you. They have no eyes and like their torso is just this big blob, much like my own. Um, and they uh, they greet you, introduce you know they confirm their their names and blah 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 blah. Um, 
and they explain that they've basically been testing uh, to see how long they can endure what's going on. Um, because they, they too feel a tiny bit like, but they seem to be able to endure it a little bit longer than you. Um, and they're considering swimming down to the bottom. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can help you here. Uh, I mean, well, maybe if you guys like swim to the bottom and like or on your way to the bottom and if you guys feel like you're getting like numb or something you can like tug like maybe if you guys got rope or something and we could pull you back up don't all adventurers have 50 feet of rope <laughs> i mean i'd probably have to go back and buy some but like yeah, go I'm ahead cool. we will wait <laughs> don't actually have any you know, no one's chat. got rope oh no i, I mean, we might have gotten some to bind people in the efforts of murder from Ravala, but not 50 feet. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so Oladar will point to a wagon uh, that they have, or cart, really. Um, if you would stay and watch our goods, we could yeah. explore, and like then we long? could return and let you know what we find. Octavia is so on board for this. She's like like a dog that's been given too many options of things <laughs> that she can do. If this takes no more than an hour or two, we do have a job that we're on. The day is almost over. I'm sure we can park here. <laughs> You could park here if you wanted, but you, you would probably be able to travel some more today if you wanted to. You guys have traveled approximately six hours so far today. You still, you still have about half a hex you could get through. Okay, we still give them like a couple hours of time, however they need. Yep. Well, Spend some time. Both of you are okay with this. Let's see yeah. what happens. I, I told you, for the guy, we're gonna... And like she like makes sure that they're like, as much as she can, that they're not watching as she mimes to Seneca like being dead in the that's okay i got it i got it don't worry so you're gonna hang out yes yeah, okay and bottle this water for it's like numbing effect sure thinking the same thing i was go ahead absolutely yeah uh just you can create your own little item in your inventory a bottle of numbing water okay so they, uh, the last one, Oladar, declose. Uh, they basically just had a robe on and they unfurl, and the three of them crawl into the water. And you see they rapidly start swimming down into this lake. Um, as you're watching, you can see there's a structure down there. Like there is a building of some kind down there from which these bubbles are emerging and the chimes are happening. Chimes are happening. Um, and let me roll a little die here. They're, and they, they're gone for an hour and there's no sign of them. Uh, the, the bubbles keep coming up. Uh, do you do anything after the first hour? So did we get rope from their cart to try to... They didn't have rope in the cart. Oh, they didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. They just wanted you to watch their shit. Can we still see them like moving? You okay. do not see them. Okay. They disappeared into mm -hmm. the building at the bottom of that lake. And again, everything is so crystal clear. It's it's stunning how clear it is. Um, Octavia is going to find a rock and just kind of like throw it down there to try and get it to land near the building to see if she can draw their attention. Okay. Yeah, you chuck it into the water. Bloop. You see it sink, 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 sink. Uh, you don't see anything emerge from the building from it. Are the bubbles and the chimes still happening mm -hmm. while they're down there? Yes. Nothing's changed about that. Nothing has changed. See what they have back there. We might just leave. <laughs> okay. Um, you go through their things, uh, and you find. Uh, what looks like just these giant, uh, like uh, giant oyster shells filled with seaweed. 
just tons of it, just tons of seaweed. Um, and you also notice that there are others that are filled with some eel-like creature, like a fish, uh, dead but slimy. Uh, it looks like they're transporting food. Mm. Octavia's no. just sitting next to the water. Okay. Just watching, waiting, and she doesn't witness you guys going through their things or she'd be very upset. Okay. Another hour goes by and they still have not returned. And you still do not see them emerge uh, from the building. Put my hand in this water to see how long it's numbing. If I do get numb, how long it like lasts. Okay, roll a physical save. Because it's the, how quickly it happens. I'm depending yeah, on that build. almost instantly for you. Oof. Because you're a weak, weak little man. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like Sonica. Pull, yeah, pulled out to see the effect. Uh, yeah, you how pull, long it's um, affecting me. Yeah, and then it over the like it probably takes maybe five to ten seconds for it to go completely numb uh and then when you take it out it probably takes about five minutes for you to get your your feeling back i don't know how these guys are in there for this long i mean i can't move my fingers uh so ninka wants to take one of her daggers and just see what happens like just oh to the to an item when you hold it in there yeah hold mm -hmm. it in there pull it out doesn't seem to really affect it Octavia, I'm not sure if they're coming back. Uh, well, I, uh, would it, would it, but they, they can breathe. Do we right? can breathe? Right, they, but like underwater, like they can do that. Like, you're not telling me that we just made new friends and I'm witnessing them die. <laughs> right? We didn't witness them die, they're just gone. I mean, uh... And how far down is the building? At least 50 feet, maybe more. Uh... I don't want to do it, but I want to do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jeff knows. She wants to cannonball into the lake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cannonball. Can we, can we fashion the seaweed into a rope? <laughs> uh, and then we have a rope that we can tie around Octavia when she cannonballs in. Yeah, seaweed does uh, would probably float, but you could probably wrap it around like a rock or something. Um, well, if you wrap it around her, then. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, roll a, a rope. roll a craft test. Oh. Hmm. You're making something, you guys. No, like now it. this is a terrible idea. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a great idea. Dexcraft. Ah, uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, eight. Uh, yeah, eight's okay. 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 So I'm braiding seaweed together into fifty feet of seaweed rope. Yeah. Yeah, you're or right. more because some of it's gonna wrap around Octavia. Okay, I, this is this is a brilliant plan. Uh, okay, uh, so Octavia, are you going down? Um, I want to give them a little bit more time. <laughs> Best idea ever. <laughs> Each got a fifty. <laughs> uh, another hour passes, Octavia, uh, and they don't return. Okay, I've got like an hour point. of sunlight uh, left. Well, while she's waiting, down. I'll just prepare dinner with the eel that's left over here. Oh, okay, yeah, that, no problem. Octavia's frantic Taking their at this food. point. Okay. There I go. So, so I jump in, right? Uh, and if you guys see me, like hanging there, limp, kind of dead, pull me up. Uh, but if I can make it in, like, I'm gonna, uh, I'll try it. That's the best you can do. If this is what you want to do, I've helped as best I can. We have something to pull you out. The, the numb feeling wasn't wasn't so fun, but that's what I mean, I do. drank the water. It really wasn't that bad. Well, don't don't drink any of it. Don't be in it and drink it. That'd be bad. Hold breath. Okay. okay. 
Uh, what's your constitution? 14. Okay. That's pretty good, actually. So I'm just looking at the suffocation rules. Uh, mm -hmm. So creatures can fight or act normally. So in this case, moving, swimming, which is like half your speed, uh, without air for one round per point of constitution. Uh, so, okay. So basically, all right. Um, if they don't move, they can quadruple this time. Once they run out of air, they must make a physical save each round or take one hit point of damage per hit die or level that they have. Okay, so you go in, Octavia? My plan is I'm gonna jump where all of those bubbles are. Okay. Coming up. Okay. Hopefully. Sounds cool. So. <laughs> you wanted to kill me anyway. You take so. a run. I never want to kill you. <laughs> I just, I like to just terrorize you and like you think like you're about to die. Yeah. Um, so you, you run, you leap and you jump in. Yes. And you're immediately washed over with this water that is numbing, uh, and you feel it. Um, but I'm going to, because you passed your previous uh, physical save, I'm going to give you some leeway here. Okay. Uh, so you're able to effectively move. Like you're, you're, you're we're going to act kind of semi in structure time. So effectively, you're going to be able to swim. Assuming you're just swimming, that's it every round. Uh huh. Thirty feet. Per round, um, so after two rounds, which is the equivalent of like about twelve seconds, you reach the top of this building, and okay. when you get down there, it you notice that it's it's looking from above. It, it was pointed, okay. So there's like a point at the top, and you can see that even more clearly now. And when you when you get down there and you the climb, you realize that the underside of that steep, that like the steeple is actually a bell tower. And there's like a very large patinaed bell of some kind uh, that is hanging underneath uh, the water. There is a trap door in the top of that bell tower uh, that is currently closed. You can also swim down over top of what looks like some kind of brownish ceiling tiles uh you're not sure if it's clay concrete something like that um but you can see that there is a small hole uh like a chimney like a little pipe chimney from which the bubbles are emerging it's too small for you to get in but you know they're coming from inside like this long uh rectangular bodied building okay um, she probably wouldn't try and open the hatch and let water in, but she'll try and swim to the thing. Adam's never going to let me forget that I killed Biggie. <laughs> yes, you can buy a complication. <laughs> you totally can. I think I have a... Do I have this? Yeah, I think it's 100 for a reroll, 300 for a complication. It's like my standard stuff now at this point. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Ashley. What were you saying you were doing? I completely missed it. She doesn't want to like try and open the hatch, but she wants to try and see if she can get in and if there's like a pocket of air. Okay. All right. So you reach down, and it was Ashley that killed Big E. It was. It was, was Ashley it who? Yeah, you spent the bits. Mm -hmm. You spent the bits. I don't remember. Well, I ca went to Captain and Carrion <laughs> spent bits to save people, and you were like, I'm going to play the evil devil while he plays the angel. And so you threw the bits out, and I had to spawn right, another Octavia. xenomorph. And Biggie died because of it. So really, yep. Ashley killed you, Got not it. me. I just, you know, I'm just here for the Adam's fans. I'm going to seek vengeance, episode one. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and roll an exertion test as you try to open a door under. Have you ever tried to open a door underwater? It's kind of hard, especially if one side of the water has got. I've never been air. in that situation. Got to look for a window to roll down. Uh, Old exertion. school. So you try to pull what it up. What is the attribute I should Strength. Do? Twelve. Okay, so three rounds have now passed. As you pull it open, like a big, boom, a big giant bubble of of air just comes up and smashes you right in the face. Um, you're starting to feel your limbs get a little numb at this point. As you are pulling the trap door open, you can feel that your fingers have gone very, very numb. You still feel feeling in your limbs, uh, but yeah, you definitely, you definitely have it open. Um, Water seeps in to the tower, and you realize that there was like a pocket of air, uh, but okay. it's quickly swapped up 
you almost fall into it, but you're able, if you want, to swim down, and you notice that there's, like, a staircase that winds and goes further downward. Posture check. Posture check. Thank you. Um, <sighs> when we can I play. probably don't want to go further downward, okay. but is there anything else I see immediately? No, it's just a, it's, it's a stairwell. You would imagine it's a, it's a bell tower, and then there's a stairs going down to the rest of it. That's it. Okay. I, Octavia's going to kind of, like, tug on her seaweed. Okay. And, uh, like, get out so I can try and start swimming up before I suffocate to death. Okay, you still have time. Um, because you have, you said you had 14 constitution? Yeah. So, you get, you can act normally without air for one round per point of constitution. So, you have 14 rounds. Um... And you've only ex- you've only expended three so far between the swimming down and now opening up the trap door. Oh, okay. So you have oh, time, no. but you do feel your arms kind of going numb and stuff. Yeah, I'm going numb though. That's. <laughs> but there's a stairs. Yeah, it, that I can get trapped in. Um, you have a seaweed rope. It's super strong. <laughs> Um, is there anything like above, like to get to where that hatch is, what do from you mean? where I'm in you're, right now? You open that. You're in. You're inside of a bell tower. Yeah. There's a bell, patinaed bell, hanging in the water over top of you. You're there's a trap door that goes into the building, like that goes down the tower, basically. So there's nothing above you. It's just if the only thing above you is the bell, and then above that, it's open water until the surface. Okay. Um, God, it would be terrible if there was a complication, right? Um, it, it would. It would. would. Be terrible. This is um, why Ashley's like, no, no, no. I'm just gonna swim right back up. No, uh, <laughs> I guess I want to see like what's in like uh, like peek down the stairs. It's a it's a it's a spiraling staircase that goes yeah. down. That's that's all it is. It's it's there's going... no like, dead body at the bottom. Mm-mm. Again, it's just a tower that's connected to a building. So like. All you're seeing is a spiral staircase. I'm waiting for Adam to kill me. So um, I'm going to need to know what you want to do. We're in, again, we're in structure type. So, okay. Because we're I'm going to go up uh, back to the bell, and I'm going to whack the bell. Okay. You whack the bell. You hear a, a like a, a deadened thud, but that's it. But there's no like reaction. It doesn't like, doesn't seem this doesn't seem to be the source of those those chime like bubbles. It's like like a dead. End, you can see that the clapper that's underneath inside yeah. the bell is, is sort of rusted, and it doesn't really move all that well within the water. Okay, because I was mostly just trying to make a lot of noise to see if like the um the Neandrians or whatever. Nandarians. Still Nandarians. Doesn't would. seem to doesn't really make a ton of noise no but it does like vibrate the the water so that's an i'm gonna say that's another round so that's four rounds yeah 10 more to go um yeah i'll use a round to go down the stairs okay so you move you take your full movement to go down the stairs and you see when you get down this the spiral staircase you can see that there is kind of an arched doorway and the frame has these illuminated runes of some kind around it. The door, it's the double doors themselves seem to also have almost like electrical diodes like shifting through them and they're hanging off the frame. Um, there's a flickering of light uh, here and there. And the, the door, one of the doors is hanging off and open. So like you, wouldn't have to open it you can literally just swim around it if you wanted to but it seems that this double doors goes into the rest of the building uh yeah i'd swim around it okay uh you swim around it and you weave between the door and we are gonna go this is gonna be turn five and i need you to roll a physical save now okay i'm gonna do it every five rounds and this is fifth round Okay. Success. Yay! Your your hands are numb and your feet are numb, but your arms are still working and you can see your hands gripping. So everything's working okay. out okay. Uh, upstairs, uh, on the surface, Weiss, you're making eel. You're <laughs> no problem. Sonika, you uh, like you feel like the 
seaweed rope is fairly taut. You you felt like a, a pull at one point, and then it kind of mm-hmm. went slack once more. But you're looking back, and you're noticing that there's maybe five, ten more feet worth of give left. I'm going to give the rope a pull. Okay, so you give the rope a pull. Um, I'm just, just going to roll something. Three really pulls. Quick. Three pulls. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to roll something. Don't worry about it. Okay, you give the rope mm-hmm. three pulls. Yeah. Octavia, when you... <laughs> Octavia, when you swim between the door and you take a look and you see inside, it looks to have been some kind of church. There's rows of like benches and pews. There's some stuff that's floating. There's an altar at one end. Um, But what catches your eye is that right square in the middle of this room, there is a swirling circular a teal vortex of some kind. And when you start moving around it a little bit, you realize like it kind of looks almost the same from each angle. It's like messing with your mind in terms of its dimensionality. Okay. And every so often you see bubbles just come out of this little vortex. You see no signs of the Nindarians anywhere in here. It's Stargate time. Is there anything else in the the room, or just the two? There's board? there's furniture, um, okay. like you see, like rows of pews. This looks this looks like it was likely a church or something like that, or a temple. Um, and you also, as you're swimming into the room and looking, you feel a a current, actually. Um, as you start feeling your body get pulled a little bit further towards that vortex. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to try and leave. Cool. Uh, can you go Never ahead... Never try. <laughs> can you go ahead and roll and exert uh, strength for me to see as you realize now that trying to swim back is incredibly... It's like you're, you're swimming against a, the riptide. And you have to try... Okay. Eight is good. Eight is enough Yay. to get you back into the stairwell. <sighs> Okay. Uh, but you watch, like, and when you look into the room, the only things that aren't getting kind of pulled towards it look to be bolted into the ground, like pews that are bolted into the floors. The altar, which is bolted into, like, a raised platform on the other side. Uh, you're at, uh, s- that was the end of seven. You yeah, have You're halfway up. there. Okay. So you, you swim up. Uh, we'll say that probably takes you two turns. And you get up to the top. Seneca, you notice her head, Octavia's head, pops out of the water, and uh, it's paler than usual, but she paddles over to the shore. She gets out, and when you try to stand, Octavia, you immediately crumble because your legs (laughs) are like pins and needles. Okay. Um... And and Seneca will kind of look behind her in the water to see if, you know, any of those other figures are behind her. They are not. And then we'll turn to Octavia. No luck, you didn't find them. I think I think they got sucked into a, a vortex. Uh, I'm sorry. Like, there was like a current, and there was like this like little tornado that was like, you know, making those little chime things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, like I don't. That. I don't. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't want to touch it. Well, I'm glad you didn't go much further because we only had about five or ten more feet of this rope, and that would have been that. I mean, yeah, my legs are a little bit weird, but I think, I think it's it's pretty cool. Well, you are sturdier than I. I stuck my face in for two seconds and couldn't feel it for like five minutes, so. I I hope our new friends are faring as well as you did, though they've been gone for quite some time. Oh, I don't I don't know about that vortex thing. Uh, we'll just we'll come back to this. Uh, I hope they come back out, but I that was that was that was weird. Okay. 
Someone might pay us for some information about that if it had been not discovered before. So at this point, it's evening time. There's probably about an hour's left of dark or of light before it becomes dark. Uh, what do you guys want to do? You lost some time by hanging around here. Uh, so what would you like to eat, do? Eat some eel. Everybody got camp set up. Might as well color them. It is, yeah. Okay. All right. So you settle in here. You let the rest of the day end. Uh, you've got some bed rolls and such. Um, you doing any kind of uh, watch, or are you just saying, you know, f it, let's just let's just sleep? Any any kind of watch being set? Yeah, I'll set a rotation. I'll take yeah. first. Okay, Weiss, um, roll a roll a, a notice whiz test. Nose. Oh, it's four. Okay. Yeah, your um your shift goes by uneventfully. Um, you do hear like to the south, um, what sounds like an explosion, like a <laughs> like a giant just rush of sound, uh, a ways away though. But it, like it's it's like a like a cracking of thunder almost. Uh, but no, it's fine. It's it doesn't seem to get anywhere close to. But you 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 can probably pace it at several miles, whatever it was. You try to look okay. on. You try to look, and you can't see any any anything in the darkness. Um, who's who's next? I'll poke up Sonen. Uh, Sonen, roll a um, roll a whiz notice. Does anybody else's stream acting weird, or is that just me? Uh, what do you mean, uh, acting weird? Too, sure. Mine's kind of stuttering. And... So it's probably me. It could be me. Oh, it's happening to me as well. Yeah, it could be me. I'm looking at my output. It's a little... Yeah, I'm fluctuating a little bit. It's kind of settling. Okay. Cool. An, an eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lost our vid, huh? Uh, let's take a look. Looks like it... Voice is good. Uh, vid showing for me. Uh, anybody else in the chat having trouble seeing us? Okay, thanks, Bart. Yeah, looks like I just got okay, a. Cool. I, I just had a bad spike. I think I'm settling down now. Uh, okay. All right. If it doesn't come back, for someone just let me know, and we'll. Yep. Refresh. Uh, uh, all right. So Sonika, you. Yeah. Drop. Wise wakes you up. Mentions this big explosion. Got your eyes peeled. Your ears peeled. Listening to the south, and periodically you continue to hear those little chimes like boom. Boom, boom. And when you uh, when you're listening, you suddenly hear a. Yeah. What was that? You look over towards the lake. You watch one of those bubbles pop, and you hear a. Yeah. Come out from a bubble. Oh, no. yeah. oh crap! I will. You do have this cart now. Not yet, Skis X. Soon. <laughs> soon. Um, hopefully not soon. I'll wake up Octavia. Okay. Octavia, you wake up, and all of you listen. I mean, you li you listen in. Maybe you don't wake up, Weiss, but you hear it. <laughs> like, like they're chime sounds, but you swear they're saying help. Can it... Can <laughs> I see if it sounds a bit like they're talking like it's, does it sound like oladar it's got that it's, yeah it's definitely sounds strange um but it does sound like a chime sound that's also vocalizing help so i'll turn to octavia and say are you up for going back there again or do we think this is a trap I mean, I think they're in the vortex. I already said that. Like, I don't know how to get them out of that. <laughs> Maybe they're like at the edge and we can pull them back out. I did not see them in there. It's up to you. I, I clearly can't go down there. Do you 
So you want to go back in again, or do we just roll over and pretend we didn't hear it? Well, I mean, I'm obviously never going to forget this moment where I met new people and then they disappeared into a terrible amount of water and disappeared into a vortex. And then I went in to try to save them. And then I couldn't even, the current's trying to rip me into the vortex. And Octavia is having, like, she's sitting down. She's got her third eye open and she's just, like, staring into the water. Um, I don't know yet. It's dark, so you can't really see below. Yeah, but she's she's just there. She's looking. yeah, that's no, fine. And every time a bubble pops, and she hears, oh. and like she just sniffles. <laughs> Jeff, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I didn't do anything. You're the one who went down there. You're the one who agreed to wait and watch their stuff. You could have just left. <laughs> These are all your choices. Long killed them because they agreed to it. You should have just killed them and taken their shit, right? That's what. <laughs> isn't that what murder hobos do? I'm like, oh, people, <laughs> they're dead now. I'm not a murder hobo. Yeah, I'm no, a golden retriever himbo. You hear, you hear calls for help popping every, yeah. every minute. But it's dark and I can't really see down there, right? No. I mean, you, it's a pretty straight shot. You know where you're going, and the vortex yeah. itself was emitting light. So you do, you do see, I would say, when you look down, you can see the, the sort of little bits of light through the seams here and there of the vortex itself, but, like, you can't see much of it. God damn it. Uh, I guess we're going for round two, boys. Are all of you going? I'm not waking up. <laughs> You're not even waking up? <laughs> <laughs> I was just on watch. Leave me alone. Uh... So Ninka is going to go back and um, lengthen the rope. Okay. With? We used all the seaweed. Yeah. Oh, did we use all the seaweed? <laughs> What's Damn better it. than the first plan? The second, in the dark, and heading for a swirling, glowing vortex. <laughs> that sucks you in, too. Uh, are there any grasses there or anything idea. in the area? Doesn't appear to be. So it's just stone and rock and... Oh yeah, you're in like a you're in a concrete jungle basically. Yeah. Vegetation is few and far between. Do I help these guys or am I focused on the mission by Rivala? I don't know, but I would like the answer to the question. I would like a decision. <sighs> I am more focused on the mission with Rivala, so like I will not hold it against you in any way if we just Well then let's say that Sanenka the talks to Octavia and then like reminds me about like we have this mission this priority hopefully they can breathe long enough when we come back we can make their <laughs> attempt <laughs> yeah you know you tell me something about how like they can breathe underwater for a really long time and octavia just eats that information up she's like okay if you promise me they can live underwater for a while we'll get them when i come back so are you gonna lie to me, Sanenka? Are you gonna tell me that they'll be okay? Um It seemed like a friendly vortex. <laughs> <laughs> um Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, you've yeah. traveled together before, she's concerned about you and uh this vengeance uh a little bit more, and this is a very risky thing. Okay. okay. So I'll you, remember that. You, so when you break my trust later, when I find them dead. Yeah, like in the upper right hand corner, it says Octavia will remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the night progresses, and and Octavia gets third watch, minute, so she just gets to sit there and hear that every minute. And then the last person who's on watch is Octavia, who for her entire shift has to hear every minute. Oh, oh. You guys wake up. Octavia's been crying <laughs> the whole night. And so, <laughs> sun comes up, and do you guys leave? Yeah, yeah it's time to go. Do you take their cart? Yeah. Do you really? Okay. We do. 
Yeah, I don't think they're coming back, and they told us to look after it, so we're looking after it. Okay. So you take their cart, and you leave. I like how you go down there when you're not... Okay, you've left. You've gone. You're traveling. Yeah. I like how you go down there when you're not sure if they're down there or what's going on, but like when you do have like, oh, crap, they need help. Nah, let's not go down there now. <laughs> you death experience. Yes, it was scary, and had rolls gone poorly, you could oh, have died. Oh, no, it's fine. It's totally cool. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you guys uh, travel for... You guys get back on the road. Um, Gave it the good old college try. Morning uh, is a bit uh, foggy. I remember, you're kind of on the coast. There's a mountainous, rocky coast. There's ocean off to the west. And it's a little bit of a foggy day. There's a foul smell on the fog. Uh, you do, by the way, have several uh, helpings of, of eel and a cart. It's a pull cart, so like someone is going to be using this. Like, someone They don't have an animal to pull it. They were pulling it themselves, and it's kind of heavy, but you're able to do so. Um, don't tell me you make me pull the cart just because I have goat legs. Wow, that's that's specious. Okay. so You, you take turns. So, okay. Yeah, so I would say... For the next, for, probably for the first four hours of the morning, as you move into a couple different places, and you continue down what looks like this this long canyon that is kind of winding and weaving. It doesn't look like this was um, like this little canyon you're in. This this might have been like a dried canal or a riverbed. Might have naturally been formed. There aren't any signs in the middle of it of of it being uh, kind of created like artificially. Um, I need whoever is kind of scouting out in front, whoever's like leading the way, Who, who's pulling the cart, who is kind of scouting, leading the way. I'm pulling the cart because I wanted it. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I'll scout. Okay. Go ahead and roll a whiz notice roll. This actually is going to be contested. Yeah. Six. Okay. All right. Um, so looking ahead, the it's it's the gr the ground of this like little dry riverbed is actually fairly easy to pull a cart on. Like it's actually not difficult with the wheels, um, and there are a lot of like rocks and boulders that are in the way. So you have to kind of weave around them here and there. But in terms of like the flatness of the ground, the the kind of the caked riverbed, it's it's pretty easy to pull. At one point, however, as you're weaving around a set of boulders, you bump into something and you hear a squawk. You hear a from whatever it is that you just bumped into. It just looks like this big rock suddenly echoing out. Sonica, out in front, you hear this sound uh, mm -hmm. from behind you, where Weiss is like bumped into one of these one of these rocks. And as you turn around, you you notice something starting to roll or move out from behind a boulder up in front. And when you look, you see what looks like a a giant pile of animals. Uh, like small little uh, like rodent size, mm -hmm. some hair and some fur, some skin. And they're just piled on top of one another. Bodies ripped apart and kind of innards spewing out. Others, what looks like, are mostly intact. Some have been ripped apart entirely. And there's got to be a dozen or more of these things that are almost like they're pinned on top of what looks like a rocky shell. And as the sound behind you by Weiss goes, you hear it echo from the front, from beneath that large pile of small little rodent-sized corpses. And then you hear a third echo, a little off in the distance, up on a ridge. And as these two, this, the the pile of rocks by Weiss and the pile of corpses by Sonica, they suddenly stand 
and you see these long slender legs with these huge talon like claws as a bird like creature suddenly extends their talon arms out from the sides. They look almost like an emu or an ostrich. Uh, but the one up by Sonica is much bigger and is covered in what looks like the bodies of corpses, of these tiny little corpses. So for the first time, let's roll for initiative. Oh, dear. And I'll also allow Weiss and Sonica a uh, a survive whiz roll if you want to I try to identify these things since you've been out here before. So initiative, so why don't you guys go ahead and roll that, and I will talk for a second about initiative. Uh, How do we roll it? Initiative, we're doing group-based initiative. Uh, so what basically that means is like each side uh, rolls initiative. You guys pick whoever's got the best initiative score, and you guys roll initiative, and then you roll it versus mine. And if you guys beat their initiative scores, then you get to go first in whatever order you want. And if you fail, then they get to go first in whatever order they want. And that's pretty right. that simple. Um, I really like group-based initiative. It's so simple. My initiative is one. Uh, so is mine. And Octavia, don't forget that your your side, like you get a your side gets a bonus to your initiative roll because your 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 origin focus. Yeah. Um, so what's your total initiative bonus, Octavia? Uh. Not no. counting your origin focus, like that's. Oh, just one. Okay. So then all of you have one, so anyone can roll it. And then you also get to add an extra plus one because Octavia's eye pops open. Yeah. And, yeah. What's the roll? Yeah, how do we roll? There should be a button on there. We can't click it. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just a dex check, basically. Just roll 2d6 and add your, um, or excuse me, 1d8 and add your dex, um, uh, and add your dex modifier. So who wants to roll it? Only one of you gets to roll. I'll roll it. All right. Yeah. And then I will roll mine. I don't have a bonus. I just roll a d8. I rolled a seven. I rolled a three. Okay. So. So your three becomes a four. Yeah, it's still it's still not going to beat their seven. Yeah. I I got a little map for us. Let me see if I can get this up. I don't have a cart, however. I didn't realize you guys were going to have a cart. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Um, so, Sonica, you're out front. And then, let's see. Give me one second as I get this set up. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk about what weapons you guys are wielding while I get this all set up. I have daggers and a staff. Yeah, so my weapons, we don't use, like, constructed unless it's from ourselves because our race sheds oh, bone your bones and that right. gets constructed into like bone daggers that I have nice cool. All of what do you, you have warriors? Octavia? I'm a warrior shapeshifter so I have uh, armor, my shield and a short sword and what do you have Melissa? Uh, I have two daggers and a staff That's what I've got. I'm also going to try talking to them. Okay. Spoiler alert. (laughs) Okay. Talking to the birds. Uh, Okay. Spoiler alert. They go first. Let's um, bring everyone over to that. Look at the cute little bird. Okay. (laughs) should be i think that's visible on stream let's see how's that look you can zoom in looks looks good zoom in a little bit you can try yeah okay all right so you've got three of these things you've got one of these things up here one over by weiss and one that's facing sonica the one that facing sonica is a little different than the others and that it is uh it's got all these different carcasses on top of it what was the no the survival role you you got 10 Ten's pretty good. So, Weiss, you would know these things are what are called, um, they're called Vitsu. They're basically, they're a, a, a small pack of predatory birds, but they're flightless. Um, 
and they tend to be more like mountainous like they kind of hang out in the mountains more the undulants a little bit more but they can wander the streets here and there they are carnivorous uh they have uh they're they're probably about 70 to 90 pounds full grown um and you know that they're kind of also have like a beetle like carapace that has the ability to kind of blend and look like rock here and there uh and uh yeah and they they'll usually stay away from larger packs unless they're agitated and it's possible that bumping into them in your cart and kind of traveling in this area might have agitated them. Uh, all right, so they get to go first. Isn't that great? They get to go sure. first. Octavia is going to survive the nummy water like thingy ma bob under the water and die to a bird. Okay, so this is fun. It's our first combat. I was hoping we would do a combat tonight. Um, so I'm going to have the one that's back by Weiss is going to go first. Uh, and as it emerges from its like small little nap it was taking as its sort of rock form, um, it's going to uh, just peck away at you. It's got this long pointed beak and it's going to try to ha like hack away at like the back of your leg. Uh, and so it's going to make an attack. Um, <laughs> that uh that's uh that's not a good roll uh uh so what's your oh. what's your ac 11 okay and it inflicts one shock damage to ac 13 or less uh okay i can't forget ac is higher is better okay uh so that's gonna be a total of one just one point of damage what the one from shock uh you don't add them together uh so shock only happens if like the if the attack wouldn't have hit you um then the shock would hit as long as your ac is 13 or less mm -hmm. so but in this case it's just the normal attack so you just take the one point of damage as it okay. hacks away at you uh mm -hmm. then the other one over here by sonika uh will also attack um, this one, as it flops forward, you see these little carcasses start to fall off its body. Um, Weiss, you would know that one of the things that these creatures do is they pile up carcasses on one of the people, one of the creatures in the pack, so that they can lead them back towards like younglings and stuff and feed. So it's possible that you guys are kind of encroaching upon a nest area, and that might be why they're agitated and defensive. Um, all right, so then. The one over by Sonica will go ahead and attack her. Uh, AC 11? I have 14. Okay, so the shock doesn't even go through either because it's only eight, the AC 13. So you're able to kind of shift and dodge. Uh, the bulkiness of this creature with the bodies falling around mm -hmm. is kind of probably slowing it down a little bit, giving you time to, to dodge out of the way. Um, this other one is going to just move... Uh, and then sort of glide down onto the final onto the uh, the bottom floor but won't be able to do any other sort of action this round so then it's up to you guys you guys can go in whatever order you want um, don't forget that there is a combat actions uh, handout in foundry if you want to take a look at it um, I want to try to talk to them first okay see if that works okay uh, uh, so you want to go first I would like to go first. All right, go for it. Let me roll. So I have uh, Tongue of the Beasts is one of my Beast Master arts. So I can commit effort as an on-turn action. And while it remains committed, I can speak to any animal that has fur, feather, scales, or skin. Okay. This art allows them to temporarily speak as if they had human intellect, though their interests, knowledge, and desires do not change. Okay. So I want to kind of the one, you know, I kind of dodged out of the way and kind of didn't get hit by the one in front of me. Um, and I'm just going to say, we're just trying to pass through. Uh, if you let us pass, we're, we won't attack you and we'll just be on our way. Okay. So that's what you say? Mm-hmm. Okay. You hear uh, 
this it, it, it's, it speaks intelligently in your head or something. It's squat well, it's squawking in such a way, and you kind of get the sense that it's um. You specifically asked to to be let pass through, mm-hmm. and at the suge- at the idea of doing that, you get rage. And like none shall pass moment from this creature, uh, and so and it continues to stay in sort of a haunch defensive posture in front of you. Um, okay, so this is an on turn action, so I think I can still do other things. Mm-hmm. Um, it, as many things as you would allow, basically. Would, uh, would say. Yeah, I mean, like I feel like if you're talking to it, and it depends if you're if you're talking to it and you're trying to like negotiate with it. Um, Um, I would say you still have at least a move action, um, because that was, that was, that was less of just like an instinctive shout and more of a, I'm trying to negotiate with you. So I feel like if that's like a, you know what I mean? So yeah, you can move. I can basically just, um, can I do a withdrawal and a move or just a move? Uh, I'll say if you're just doing a withdrawal, that's fine. Like a fighting withdrawal. Yeah, because you have to pair that with a move because it doesn't move you away. If that's what you want. Yeah, that's fine. I, I think that works. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and move your character. Um, yep. You know, thirty feet of movement. Each square is five feet. Usual stuff. Got it. All right. Move wherever you want. You have. You should have control of your of your characters. Uh, which yeah. Octavia or Weiss? You can go in whatever order you want. Uh, Weiss, if you want to go. So again, it was rage filled when you mentioned the notion of moving past. Yeah, and I'll share that information with everybody. To... Well. Okay. Okay. And we'll Didn't just work. Fight our way through. You can talk to birds. We'll we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, meanwhile, blood is pouring down the back of Weiss's leg. Yeah. Uh, Weiss, what would you like to do? Right. I'll just turn on this thing with my dagger. I'll stab at it. All right. Go right ahead. What is that? Is that a hit? Die? It's a hit die roll, right? Uh, go into your inventory and roll the weapon. It's 13. 13 will hit. uh, Nice. And you have like four damage. So this thing pecks away and rips at the back of your leg, right behind the knee. You wail around, take the dagger, and lunge it right into its throat. And it immediately falls. You just one shot it. You just one shot it. Yeah, nice. and this thing collapses to the ground. Okay, uh, and then uh, Octavia, it's your turn. Um, can I charge an attack? Uh, so yeah, if you take a look at the combat actions, it'll tell you uh, the different things that you can potentially do. Um, so there's some, there's some slightly like most of it's just attack and stuff, but there's like some slightly special things that you could potentially do. Um, yeah, because I'm looking at my Buffomian thing, and it says when taking the charge special action in yeah. combat. It's right, it's right there in the combat action. So a charge is you can take a wild charge before hurling a weapon or crashing into a foe. You move up to twice your normal move in a straight line before making a melee or throw an attack at plus two to hit. You must be able to move at least 10 feet and you suffer a minus two AC penalty for the rest of the round. It consumes both your move and your main action. So your specific oh, yeah. uh, origin is that like whenever, it's sort of like the idea of like you have hooves and stuff and you have yeah. horns. And so if you're doing yeah. a charge, you get a plus three to your to your melee attack as opposed to plus two. Uh, then Pretty I'll good thoughts, just, Yeah. I like it, but I'm, I'll probably just attack it. Okay, yeah, go right ahead. So you're ta- are you attacking the one closest to you, or are you attacking the one that's covered in all of the animal furs and guts? Uh, no, just the one closest to me. All right, go right ahead. So you swipe away at it, but it is able to, as it's gliding down off the cl- off the like the little cliff edge, um, mm-hmm. it's able to continue its momentum and just duck underneath your swing. Okay, all right. End of that round. Um, we'll talk later about whether we want to reroll initiative every round. I think for now, let's just keep it like just for the one because that's an optional thing we can do. We'll f- sort of figure it out as we go what kind of optional rules we want in. Um, so the one that's over by, uh, what I want to do, the one that's over by Weiss is dead. 
So go ahead and get rid of that one. Uh, Weiss is dead. Um, what? So Sonica, there's Octavia. You had a move to to be able to attack it. Um, so I'll say that and I was down here. I thought I didn't move you. I didn't touch you. You you moved yourself. Uh, Octavia, this one's just going to turn back around and swipe at you. Um, it's going to peck away. Uh, sorry, hits a- hits AC 16. I didn't mean to leave that at gem roll, but it's a- I hit AC 16. What's your AC? 16. I hit it on the dot. Uh, two points of damage. Um, as you leave yourself slightly vulnerable with a wild flail, and it burrows its its sharp beak uh, like right into your ribs. Um kind of it doesn't like doesn't really break skin but you can you can feel as like you have to exert yourself a little bit more uh to dodge out of the way of it puncturing uh puncturing right through um and then this other large one will rear up and it will uh move over towards sonica it'll <laughs> Um, and it makes itself huge and big, and as it raises these talon-like arms, like all these different rodents will just fall onto the ground, and like you can see underneath it, the the rock-like carapace that these things have. This the it's almost like the rocks have been sharpened in some way. You see these little points and spikes coming out where they have punctured or, or like kind of impaled these different uh, small carcasses of creatures. Uh, and so this one's going to attack Sonica. Um, AC 10 uh, and Sonica you're able to easily dodge out of the way of that and you're does, you don't suffer shock because you have AC 14 um, oh, so yeah right. and then that's their turn uh, so it's you guys you guys want to do hey Jeremy what's going on no more Mrs. Nice to know okay I just run oh, yeah no. yeah go ahead I'm gonna hit it back go for I'm it try to hit it back all right, so um, dagger roll melee. Don't forget, you guys. Some of you have arts and stuffs that might apply in certain cases. Uh, yeah. So you swing out at this thing. You deal two points of damage. Oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, you manage to carve your way through like three or four of these tiny little rodent carcasses and you bury your dagger right between like this little crevice of rock and you feel it hit cushion like you got a good you got a good hit when you pull the blade back out you can see that there's some kind of like brownish reddish liquid pouring out so you're you're pretty confident that you've managed to get past its outer defenses uh weiss or octavia Yeah, I'll just run up and back up Octavia on this one she's encountering. Take my dagger and just stab at that one. Hit it. 11. Mm. All right, it's my Uh, turn to try and hit it. There you go. 18, six damage. Holy. Wow. Six damage. Uh, and you're attacking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, describe your kill. <laughs> it's, um, uh, six damage after is definitely whiffing enough. so bad, like with <laughs> just totally missing it as it went past me, um, Octavia just kind of whirls around to face it again. And she just kind of stabs straight down into the dirt and just impales it on her sword. Okay. So and then like lifts it up and she's like, guys, look what I got. <laughs> it's like a it's like a Christmas <laughs> goose that you're holding up with like yeah. a with like a rocky carapace on one side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I think all of you have gone. Yep. Uh, okay, I gotta do I'm gonna do a quick roll here to see how this is reacting. It's not Oh god. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, so one of the cool things I like about, uh, Worlds Without Numbers, it gives you, like, these instinct tables. Um, there are times in which, like, you roll morale checks at times, and if the creature fails a morale test, sometimes they fall back on instinct rather than, like, what's the intelligent thing 
for you to do. So rather than playing strategically, you just do it. And so I like that. It's like tables, uh, which is similar to how certain creatures are run and like alien and stuff like that too. Uh, and I bring that up because that's what's happening right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> it's going to attack the last enemy to have hurt it, which would actually be Sonica. So it ends up just doing it again. Um, okay. Uh, so this thing is going to peck away once more at Sonica. Uh, let me switch that to public so you can see my roll. Why is it not going through? It hits AC 16 and it inflicts two points of damage. Uh-oh. Sorry, I didn't. I thought it should have been public. Uh, as two it, points of damage, you say? I do say. And then it's all your turns. Well, I'm going to hit this thing back. I'm going to try to hit this thing back. Hits AC 16 with five damage. What does that do? Uh, well, you tell me, because you just <laughs> managed to kill this thing. Um, so I'm going to kind of see kind of where I was able to hit it on the side um, the first time. And I'm going to go just opposite side, just try to hit the same area. Um, you know, okay. just kind of backhand it straight in and kind of do the same thing as last time. So as you jam the knife in, you kind of twist it a little bit. You hear a crunch. You see the pieces of the of the rocky husk just crack apart and fall to the ground. You, As you rip the dagger out, your arm gets caught up on what looks like some kind of rat tail from these carcasses. You just, like, rip three or four of these small rodent carcasses off with you. They go flying. They hit Weiss in the face. Uh, and... You've managed to kill all of these three. And as things settle, you you hear coming from behind this this big chunk of rocks in front of you, you hear little chirp, 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 chirp. And when you wander around it, you notice that there is a nest that is right inside this grouping of rocks. And there are these small, tiny almost ostrich-like or emu-like birds that have hatched from these different types of eggs. Uh, and there are, we'll say, there are three of them. No wonder they're so protective. Uh, I'll scoop in the cart. You're going to take the little birds? Yeah. yeah. So Nanka, okay. you can talk to them, right? Like, tell them that we're mom. <laughs> <laughs> and Octavia's gonna go and scoop up more of the little dead carcass babies, like rats and stuff that got discarded on the ground. Sure. Be like, do I have to chew this to feed it to them first? Do you think? Or why? Well, you would know that that is actually the case. Yeah. Yeah, that is how they are fed. <laughs> uh, you might catch a disease if you do that, but. You, then I'll just kind of mash it with my sword, I think, and okay. then. Uh, and just like will... spit on it or something. And, yeah, Octavia yeah. will take out her dagger and just like spend some time like just mashing this up into a pulp to feed the babies. Okay, fair and enough. I'll try to I'll try to do some little chat All with right. the babies, which I'm assuming is not. I'm going, going to make the <laughs> argument that they're babies, <laughs> so they're probably not going to be big no, conversationalists. Something, something that communicates a soothingness. Like I'm not expecting any response. Just <laughs> attempting to communicate. A... Like Octavia is yeah. just going to be over the birds and be like, "Mom." <laughs> and, what, and that's and, it but let's go and what you see um, with Sonenka is kind of what you saw the day before um, in speaking with um, Oladar you'll just kind of get this mimicry that'll happen and so you'll hear Sonenka making basically the same kinds of sounds that um, the birds are making Nice. As she, you know, kind of also uses her art. Okay. Um, Octavia's gonna look at Weiss and just be like, "What is she doing?" Yeah. <laughs> when you turn to look at me, because that battle drew blood, you'll see me pulling out a leather-bound book and wiping my hand with a blood-filled hand with the book and doing a little prayer, like let this be an offering to the blood goddess, sort of thing. Very nice. I thought I, I bled too. Do you want? Do you want some of mine? <laughs> no, it's fine. I'll do it. Do you want like a full handprint in there? That'd be cool. <laughs> Second thought, maybe. Yeah, go ahead. Why not? Okay. And Octavia will like whatever, <laughs> whatever I got hit by. I'm just gonna like take like a handful of it and put a nice handprint in the book. 
Okay. <laughs> so. And you what get... you're gonna Go also ahead. see after about an hour of time, um, you're gonna see that you know, kind of Sonika has been trying to kind of you know talk and kind of help out with all this. And after about an hour, you'll just kind of see her just kind of stand up and stretch and move around, and she looks uh, like she's doing quite a bit better. Um, because one of her arts is Master's Vigor. And I regain two lost hit points per hour due to my natural restorative powers. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So as the travel continues, you guys take the baby, the baby Vitsu. Uh, do you take the carcass? You would know that the carcasses themselves, like you can eat them, but it's like it's like eating crab. It's, it's a little work to get to the good meat, uh, but you definitely could. Um, mm. if you wanted um, the other like the rodents that you're seeing there's a couple different kinds but um, there's one in particular that you see a lot of uh, which is sort of like this like almost like a subterranean like furry mole um, but you collect those you throw them into your cart so you have eel that you've, you've you have a lot of food back here actually you also would know that um, there's like there's different types of salvage that you can get and bring back to people in big in big husk uh, there's like, you know, obviously ancient tech if it's workable, salvage if you have it, but also this kind of stuff like foods, foodstuffs is definitely worthwhile. Um, certain folks might use various aspects of animals, animal parts to create various pulses, medicines, and things. So there's ways in which you could just take salvage and back. So it's very, very much like that. As long as you can keep it preserved, as long as you're not out here for too long, and find ways to do that. Um, but what we'll say is you'll continue to travel for the rest of uh, for the rest of the day, or at least for most of the day, and you find your way out of this um, out of out of this little canyon that you're in. And when you come up, you notice in front of you um, a very large structure. It does not have a top of it the symbol that you're looking for. Um, but you, there, there's something kind of curious about it. And when you look at it from a distance of probably about 100 to 200 feet, you notice vegetation, vines growing down it. Um, and you can actually see some of these small little alcoves and windows up behind some of that vines where there's movement as if somebody is kind of darting and watching your progress. Uh, and I think that's where we're going to go ahead and stop uh, for tonight and mm, uh, pick up nice. next week. Yeah. Um, first thoughts? What do we think? Impressions? Definitely interesting yeah. so far. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I really like the system, actually. There's a lot of cool little streamlined moments, tweaks here and there. Uh, I like the power curve. It's not as wild and crazy. Um, I think it's a little flatter. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm a big fan of it. And plus... I think we can do like just some some crazy weird stuff with this one. Uh yeah. The world sure. building the world building components for the GM in the back uh if you it's just they're so good. Uh, I should also drop that link one more time. Um there's there's a free version where it has everything you need to play, honestly. The deluxe version has additional additional what amount to subclasses basically that you can use in, a, in other tools and tricks and trades and stuff. So, um, we use some of them. Yeah. And we are. So everyone in here is doing what's called an adventure where they're just kind of doing like a, like a, it's like multi-classing basically where they're taking hybrids of this and hybrids of that. So everyone's kind of got their own different roles. Uh, all right. We'll be back next Saturday. We're going to try to play this every set. Most Saturdays, there'll probably be some we miss, but for the most part, we're going to be playing this every Saturday. Um, Start up around the same time for Central. Uh, we have other shows that we've been doing this coming Monday. You can catch Melissa and I back on our channel at 9 Central at night as we continue our Alien RPG game. Uh, we're using the Alien game from Free League. Uh, we have been running a ongoing uh, campaign that's been pretty fun. So it's a lot. Of, it's a sort of custom story. It's if you've played the cinematics and stuff, and you're looking for more Alien content, come watch our stuff. Catch our our. our uh, our YouTube channel, if you want to look back on previous chapters, so uh, of that campaign, a lot of fun. Uh, next Friday, we will the four of us here, including one of our other friends, will be continuing our Delta Green game. We have been playing through Impossible Landscapes, uh, which is a new Delta Green campaign that dropped uh, this year. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then Saturday we'll be back again. Yeah. 
yeah cool stuff um so hopefully we end chapter one yeah yes delta green <laughs> oh i think we'll definitely do that because we had pipe bombs and we were pouring like out like like gasoline all over the place i'm pretty <laughs> sure i don't yeah. unfortunately i don't think defenders are up yet on goodman so what we'll do is i'm gonna go ahead and throw us on the end screen and uh we'll raid one of our friends looks like diesel shot is up and playing their their friends of the stream um so go check out what they're doing and uh have a good rest of the night so thank you for all of you who hung out thanks for the few bits that we got thrown at uh and uh yep. the threats the subs. of complications the subs all those things <laughs> uh definitely great to 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 get started with a new game so we'll see you next week good night folks and good night bye-bye